Welcome everyone to a very special hobby stream, and I'm joined today by a very special guest, Miss Cat Titus, known in the area as sort of an awesome painter. Cat, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Sort of awesome. Sort of awesome. Uh, I think quite awesome. And we're going to be doing a hobby titan's favorite here today, which is trees. We've painted trees now. Um, I think you're actually the fourth time we've painted trees. Glad to hear it. Yeah. So we have done a lot of trees. But we are finally going to do like a deep dive into trees. Kat's going to take us on a deep dive into trees. Uh, a deep dive into the woods, I and, guess. Yes, yeah. a, deep, uh, a deep trip into the <laughs> woods. We have an autumn-themed tree here today. And you guys can probably guess why we picked autumn, an autumn-themed tree, of course, because it is right in the middle of October, uh, one of my favorite months. And we are really excited. Um, Kat, are you ready to do this? Yeah, let's okay. get into it. Let's do it. Okay, guys, let's get creative. Okay, and here you can see Kat's autumn tree. This is what her and I are going to be recreating. Well, she's going to be recreating. I'm going to be tagging along and trying to recreate this. I'm really excited to paint an autumn tree, I have to say, uh, because I have some plans to do this. A, a terrain board that uses autumn trees in the coming year. Um, I'm going to do sort of a board that can be used for sci-fi and also fantasy wargaming. And I want just a generic fall wilderness setting. And I need to get like some, my, I need to level up my tree game. And that's kind of why we called Cat in here to help me, but also you guys at home, level up our tree game. Cat, um, talk to us briefly before we dive in and get started on this. Talk to us briefly about sort of the process. What are we going to be doing? Um, what tools are we going to be using, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. So my, my vision with, with making these trees um, was to make them as approachable as possible. Um, it, to have them on display and if people go, you know, how do I paint this? I can just go, sweet, awesome. These are the things that you need. Um, because, you know, I've work at a local game store. Right. And so we talk about Game Castle all the time. <laughs> yes. This is Cat. When we say we'll have to ask Cat at Game Castle, this is who we're talking about. Now they know. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> sweet. Um but yeah, so my my vision with it was okay, how do I make it approachable? How do I make it easy? How do I not use an airbrush? Um which is I, I wanna say kind of like my my like hobby like handicap of I, I constantly feel like oh, this would have been so much better if I used an airbrush, but mm. not everyone has an airbrush, yeah. not everyone wants to get an airbrush. Yes, true. Or, you know, just, just stuff like that. So, uh, you know, generally, how do I make this as approachable as possible? October is one of my favorite months as well, too. Mm -hmm. So very fitting that we're doing the fall one. Um, and like, I mean, like someone said earlier, you know, it trees aren't brown. Trees are not brown. I said that. They, I, I, Say that all the okay. time. They're, they're freaking out and yeah. Yeah, so yeah, uh, uh, that was another thing as well too, of, of getting people out of the uh, mindset of, oh, when I think of trees, I think of brown bark and I yeah. think of green leaves. Um, and so, you know, we, we could see that this tree doesn't really have a whole lot of brown in it. Um, we will be using brown, but it would be more of like a, uh, like in the recesses, yeah. um, we're just trying to use it to add warmth a little bit, but it's also, it's very distinctly a birch tree yeah. in a sense. Yeah, I love it. Um, I, I agree. I, I almost never use brown on my trees, although sometimes brown sort of happens, right? Like we put red and green together and we get a little brown. We had some redwood trees where we did that. I also have to say I'm super excited that we're not using an airbrush. I love airbrushing, but um, I think in all of our hobby streams, we might have so far up until now had maybe three in about six months of streaming where we did not use an airbrush. Awesome. And it's usually like very much specifically like, hey, we're not airbrushing today. So I'm, I'm kind of glad that we're not. Sweet. Um, yeah. That yeah. said, if we need to, you know, they're hooked up. So. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah. I mean, maybe if we start running out of time or something, it definitely makes things easier. But also at the same time, you don't get like the same texture that yeah. you get from dry brushing. And I, stuff. I find that uh, anything nat natural, nature -y, right? Which is kind of your specialty. You like doing fur, you mm -hmm. like doing skin, uh, wood, trees. Um, I kind of find that, yeah, often it, it is a good place to not airbrush. Uh, okay. With that said, 
How do we, how, how, what are we doing? How are we starting this? Yeah, so um, um, I have a pretty fat airbrush, or not airbrush, a uh, dry brush here. Okay. Um, so I'll just, got we're going to be working big to like small. Okay. Um, and so the main thing is I want to get this bark painted because um, it has mushrooms and it has texture on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we want to make those different colors and make them stand out and stuff. And yeah. so, you know, if we're dry brushing everything, it's going to get messy. Okay. So first color that I like to start with when um, it comes to this tree specifically yep. is either this whole red or like a, like a brownish red color um, or, you know, just straight up like a gray brown color. So okay. it depends on how much warmth you want to put into it. Honestly, I'd probably mix both of these. Okay. Um, and, and, just play around, even if you don't mix them completely um, and you have like some spots that are more warm and more gray. That's good, stuff, that's a good thing. It's yeah. realistic, yes. Yeah. And so it really, the, the sense of it is we're gonna try and get as easy as possible, as messy as possible and show people that like, you know, you don't have to be super precise in order to come up with something that is visually appealing. Um, and dry brushing was one of the first like techniques that um, I got into. And then when I got into competition painting, I kind of fell into the whole avenue of like, oh, dry brushing is bad and dry brushing is cheating and dry brushing, you know, is, is not good enough. And so now I've kind of like found that happy medium yeah. of, of no, you can use it and it can be good looking and it can be awesome. You just got to use it in the right way. Yeah, I love it. Um, okay, so we're going to zoom in here on you and watch mm -hmm. you mix some paint because, uh, again, I actually don't really mix a lot of paint. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> I mix all the time. I mix all the time, which is why we have an assortment here mm -hmm. because I don't keep formulas. I just oh. go based off of <laughs> what I feel like doing. Um, and I come from a background of um, traditional painting where I painted a lot of landscapes, a lot of um, canvas painting and okay. stuff. And so that's kind of where I get my, like being comfortable uh, mixing paints and stuff. Cause you know, sometimes yes. you just can't find that perfect shade. I come from a classical music background and we write everything down. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I took some piano lessons back in the day. I, I understand, it's just, uh, you know, it's like sometimes if I'm working on like a competition piece, I will start to separate the paints that I grab for. Yeah. Um, but I don't then go, okay, well, these are the only paints I'm going to work with. I see. Yeah. So um, I'm going to, I'm not going to be like super like, oh, I'm going to try and dry this brush off as much as possible because really I want to slather paint down. Um, and so I'm just going to just start just mushing it in there. Okay, awesome. So this is almost like, um, we frequently sometimes call this, uh, not quite, but it's almost like overbrushing. Yeah. Um, but of course the awesome thing about GW models and people are always like, oh, GW models are so expensive. This is why, because they're designed to take paint, I feel like, so well. And they're not the only company that does that, but it is something they do really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like the texture and the consistency that you get with GW models, right? Like you, I, I've opened up so many different, you know, uh, miniature games and stuff. And, you know, just over the years of working for Game Castle, um, I've come across so many different things. And the consistency that you get with the models from Games Workshop um, are great. Like, you can depend on it. And, and I also like that with, you know, certain paint lines and stuff, which is why the majority of these paints are the AK, the AK third gen. Yeah, yeah. Which, we, which we do use a lot on here, um, largely because... Oh no, I just broke one of these immediately. That's okay, we have super cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's like the least, that's like the least problem. I mean, it, it makes it easier for you to get your brush in there, so. I, I was actually gonna ask you about that. Um, I, I think like we, we have, you and I have different uh, uh, go end goals when we paint. Um, yours is competi com competition, show pieces, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, I, I do like trying to win best painting when I go to an event where I'm also playing. But it's never my goal to just do that, right? Yeah. Um, and to, to that end, I typically will, um, trees are a little funky actually though, but I typically never assemble anything to completion. Okay. Um, uh, talk to me, like what, what makes you want to do that? What makes you not want to do that? Uh, when it comes to terrain pieces and stuff, uh, I don't 
care. Um, it, it, like, subassembly is great when, you know, you have, like, an arm that covers, like, an entire, like, cape or something. Um, and I will subassemble for that. If I'm going to be, like, uh, you know, with the miniature game that I just got into, Conquest. Hey, yeah, let's um, talk about that a little later. I want to yeah, ask you about that. Yeah, I subassembled a lot of that. Like, there's, um, you know, these raptor riders and stuff, and there's people, and these, uh, like, orc warriors that are on top of these raptors. Oh, sure. I completely just didn't put them on at sure. all whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to terrain, I find I don't, I'm not really super picky. Um, I will fully assemble. And then if I find a, a place that like, oh, I can't get paint in there, um, I'll honestly take like uh -oh. a drop of paint <laughs> uh, and just drip it in there and okay. then just kind of like wash it off a little okay. bit. Okay, that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you get you get the coloring of it, but uh, I build so many tables, I built so much terrain. Um, and there, there used to be a point where like, oh, I want to put this, I want to put bubbles in the, in the, you know, resin water to have this like cool swamp effect and stuff. And then you find out like, okay, the moment someone plays on it, all those bubbles are gone. Um, yeah, sure. They're all popped, you know, everything like that. Uh, they're all squished, you know, whatever. And yep, so yep, yep. when it comes to stuff that I know is going to be handled a lot, you know, d did I did I think after I assembled all of these, maybe I shouldn't have glued all of the leaves on? Yeah. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, um, it, the end product, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you're, you're you're right, and uh, you know, as as uh, Cat, it was as super. We have a local gaming club. You guys have heard all of us talk about it. Um, everybody in Titans is in it. Um, called Fault Line, and Cat was super helpful, and Game Castle in general with um, helping us uh, get get that going. And that's that's maybe one thing that I also learned that from from starting a gaming <laughs> yeah. club, which is like, hey, your stuff's gonna get beat up a little bit, so uh, you know, think about how you're making it. Well, thank you, 95 Ginger Rage. Uh, hey, just watching while painting some models, looking at my airbrushed green and brown trees and feeling shame, LOL. Looking forward to seeing uh, the end product. Never dawned on me to uh, not do brown and green trees. I mean, there's nothing wrong with brown and green, right? Because that's, that's what most people go for. But if you want to get really, you know, and start to start to really pay attention to the realism side of things yeah. um and you start to get into okay well what would an actual tree honestly really look like yeah all you have to do is just go outside and look at a tree yes <laughs> um, I, I told people to do this like on our first stream i was like guys go outside looking at a tree they're not brown they're so they're so gray they're so weirdly not brown yeah and um you know, there, it, it also depends on the kind of tree that you're, you're looking at as well, too. Like, redwoods, I think, um, are very red, um, obviously. But, we, uh, we did redwoods on the stream. Yeah. And yeah, we used... Actually, you have it here. In fact, you have, like, all the colors we used for redwood. <laughs> we started with black red. Okay. And um, then I think maybe the wine one you had here uh -huh. or hall. Yeah, like, we, we literally used these same colors. Yeah, and, like, there's definitely brown notes to trees. It's not wrong. But if you want to, you know, make it a little bit more realistic, then get some gray and just dry brush over the bark. And you still get the brown undertones um, of, you know, the base color that you put in. But bark oftentimes is very, very, very gray. Um, and so if you want it to be more realistic and you want to just kick it up a notch, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, it just dries, dry brush some gray over it and see how you feel about it. And and if, you know, less is always more. You can always add more. It's hard to take away. Uh, and so if you feel like, you know, you're scared of, of messing up this beautiful paint job that you've done, um, don't be. Because, <laughs> you know, you can always paint back over it, but yep. also you can start light and, you know, gray br or dry brush a little bit over it. I actually did that literally just now because I'm looking over at you and yours just looks like it's on uh, so much more than mine was initially. So I kind of went back and I'm going, 
in a little bit more now. Yeah, yeah. My main thing is I don't want it to get it into the cracks. Right. Uh, because I, I want those cracks to stay black yeah. um, and stay very dark because uh, it adds just more contrast, especially because we're going to be going pretty light with this bark. Right. Um, <clears throat> and so I just, I find that more visually appealing. Is that super realistic? I don't know, but uh, you know, Go look at a birch tree, right? Well, we it's, always say here, like, realism is great, but frankly, it just needs to look good. Yeah, you know? exactly. That's, right. that's the goal. I, I I strive for realism, but there's always a there's always a place where you're like, okay, you know, this might not be super realistic, but I want it to look good. And, you know, it's, it's like when you get into weathering as well, too. You can definitely go, you know, completely overhanded with weathering, mm -hmm. but you can completely underhand it as well, too. Um, you just, you're just kind of striving for what looks good. Will that dirt pile be exactly where you want it to be in real life? No, but I'm going to put it there because yeah. it looks good. <laughs> right, exactly, um, exactly. And, you know, it balances out the whole piece. A lot so. of people get caught up on realism. I think it's, it's not always the, the it's a, sometimes a detriment. Yeah, so, okay, so we got, you know, this baked color down. It's yeah, pretty I'm gonna dark. Yeah, I'm going to do a little zoom on, on you here. Sweet. Okay. These cats, and you know these these early uh, these early ones never uh, show up too well. And also, cat, just so you know, I didn't tell you this before our stream. The guys uh, watching always hear Brett and I complain about this. The TV is like this weird dark setting um, over where where Seth is, is sitting. Uh, probably he's seeing it, and it looks not nearly as dark as it does on the TV. So if you're like, oh my god, no one can tell what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you and I that can't tell what's going okay. on. Okay, really convenient for a stream. Setting. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, I do want to see how mine. If I'm like on the right track. Oh. Okay, I think I'm on the right track. Yes. So far, I'm keeping up. Okay, good. It'd be bad if the first step, uh, <laughs> I was already, I was already, you know, behind or not doing it right. You see, that's that's the fun part about dry brushing is that, um, you know, you can just always do more or yeah. or cover it up, right? It's yeah. super easy. So I've washed off my brush a tiny bit. Now okay. I don't, I'm not really picky about my brush being super dry or anything like that. Um, can, can I say or ask, is that is that because like, you know, we're doing a natural thing and we're going to the next color. So if a little bit of this is there, that only really kind of makes sense, right? Yes. We're yeah. not now switching to the leaves and the leaves aren't like, like yellow and we're going to screw it up, right? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to, we're going to do the bark pretty much to completion. Um, and then we're going to go into the leaves. It's just with this particular model, a lot of the branches actually go into the leaves and stuff. And so it's a little bit hard to like be super precise, but um, that's what, you know, the smaller brushes are for later. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay, so what color's next? What yeah, we next? so we're gonna go into this pretty light gray, this uh, sky gray color. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna put it down kind of next to where I put this gray brown okay. because I'm gonna mix the two. So I'm gonna need a little more gray brown probably awesome. here. Awesome. Uh, okay, let's do a top on you so we can see. It's kind of actually fun to see people mix paints. I'm going to add myself a little more gray-brown and then this guy, light yeah. gray. Interesting. Okay. So majority of my color, because I want to go pretty light right now, mm -hmm. is going to be the uh, lighter gray color. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to like touch maybe like the corner of my brush here and then I'm going to pick up like a big glob of this. And then I'm just going to mush it around. Uh, when it comes to mixing paints and stuff, um, if you are like afraid of doing too much, especially when you're mixing like a pretty dark color with a light color, mm -hmm. just do a little bit at a time. We're not trying to like color match anything with this tree. Um, if you were trying to color match, then obviously you know you'd have your formulations down. Yeah. Um, but you know that's not the goal here. I'm gonna dry this one off pretty good not okay. not as you know crazy but I do want to have this dark brown peek through a bit okay and we can always go back in and um, you know add more if it's too light um, and so I'm gonna get as little on the brush as you know I possibly can oh, right this now. is fun I forgot how fun it is to, like take a class <laughs> the last time I did anything remotely close to taking a class is um, like a, like a one of those wine and paint nights oh okay <laughs> okay <laughs> you know? yeah yeah I mean a lot of a lot of what I do is you know I'm trying to convey as much 
information as possible without just like talking people's face off mm -hmm. because they pop into the store for a reason usually yeah. um you know sometimes sometimes people can hang out and you know um actually sit in hobby with me um but nowadays um i don't have a ton of time to do that uh just you know workloads have been picking up like crazy and stuff um and so i'm kind of in in this weird position of you know i i want to talk to people about painting but i understand that like if i go too far sometimes they're just like that's too much exactly yeah. right yeah you can you can really overwhelm people and dry brushing is like such a a good I, I, that's always what i tell people when they're airbrushing is i say like airbrush terrain like um that's that's a great place to start because otherwise you really do feel like you have to start talking to people early on about like you know well you should do a couple passes of zenithal and they're like what's zenithal and you're like well well yeah, it's I this know, let right? me let me let me tell you let me define <laughs> uh you know zenith to you and you know yeah. and, and it, it sometimes it, it can come across as kind of condescending as well too so yeah. i I try to convey as much information as I feel like that person is comfortable with, you know, taking in um, without either overwhelming them or, you know, just assuming that they don't know anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, unless they tell me I don't know anything, then I'm like, cool, well, let's start you, you know, with the quote unquote basics. Um, Have you ever had anyone go, I don't know anything and I absolutely want to keep knowing nothing? I mean, I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have of like, don't tell me that it's going to mess everything up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy with where I am. Just show me where the paints are. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's that's definitely something. But um, and then they come back in next week. And you're like, OK, let's try that again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had I've had, you know, all sorts of experiences. I've had people, you know, like test my knowledge in a mm. way, uh, you know, um, but then I'm just kind of like, okay, you know, I n only know so much. I've only been hobby painting for maybe two and a half years. Okay. Um, and so I started my journey in the deep end, really just dove in. I s learned hobby painting through airbrushing okay. first. Wow, that's interesting. That's actually often what I, what I recommend to people. Yeah. I feel like it, it gets you out of this, um, it, it gets you off the rails and it, and it gets you off from thinking like, oh, I need to do this and this step and this step and this step first. Um, and you start thinking about things in a very like, you know, quote unquote, unconventional way of instead of like, this is a formula and these are the steps that, you know, I need to follow. It's OK, well, you know, I'm going to start off where I feel comfortable. I also have often wondered. Um Personally, if if by having somebody start as a having somebody start as a uh, airbrusher, uh, you know, lots of times people will have will come back into like let's say even wargaming, like back into their like late twenties or thirties. Mm -hmm. um, and I sometimes wonder if it helps detach people from you know just doing like childhood projects because none of us airbrush when we're like. You know, like your dad doesn't bring home like like oh look at this little airbrush. Uh, look at you know, this, I wanna. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I sometimes also wonder if it helps people kind of like detach from this, you know, uh, simplistic view of just like picking up a paint and you know because we also didn't like you know whenever you're doing those kinds of crafts as a kid or even if you tried to paint your miniatures as a, as, a, as a child, most of us uh, weren't really like, uh, especially before the internet, weren't really like I, I didn't know. What I didn't even think about dry brushing. I think like randomly in a game store one time someone was like, "Oh, you got to do this." I was like, "What? Why yeah. would I get the paint off my brush?" You know, I was like ten years old. But um, I, I, sometimes I feel like airbrushing just resets people's minds, like in a way. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, dry brushing when it comes to like you know traditional canvas paints and stuff um, is not at all the dry brushing with, you know, or at least the goal of dry brushing with miniature painting of like, oh, you, you know, you want to focus on the recesses and stuff like that. Dry brushing is, is, I mean, it's kind of sort of the same where, you know, you're painting with very little paint, um, you know, your brush isn't wet, stuff like that. Right. But, um, it, it's not in a sense of like, oh, you want to pick up like these little details here, at least in the way that I was using it. Um, it was more so of like, you know, I need a really soft effect. Um, and so it, to, to know that, you know, 
this technique that I've been using for for so many years can be used in a different way. Yeah, um, was really eye opening to me when I when I started like going heavy into things. Yeah, um, this is great. Oh, I, I missed one of the roots. Oh my gosh. Okay, but let's do this real quick. Let's put mm -hmm. yours on the glam cam. All right. I kind of want to see where we're at. And also, I just want to get a good look at it myself to see if mine kind of looks like that. And then if it does, I'm going to put mine on the glam cam as well. And if it doesn't, then I'm not going to put mine on the glam cam, you know, for, uh, for, because I'm, for obvious reasons. But I think I'm good. Okay, I'm going to put mine on the glam cam. So there we go. Oh, no, I hope it don't mix up. I'm not going to mix up. Yours is... Yeah, yours has a longer... Yours is thing. also much more vivid. You, you actually have... Yeah, you've hit the ridges a little more than me, and I like that. I might do that real quick, okay. especially since I have to hit this root. But feel free to go into the next step. I will catch up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just uh, I noticed someone uh, mentioned uh, the exemplar wet palette on Kickstarter. I totally backed it. Um, oh yeah. It looked really cool, but that I'm was... also a uh, I will buy so many different hobby yeah. things just to try it out, um, and it, it you know it helps my job, but it's also like that's. Kind of my passion as yeah. well too. Can I ask, is, is the exemplar the the red grass one that is like, is that the one that is supposed to have the sheet? Is it red grass? They, um, have, they have a they just did a Kickstarter where they have one where it, it like let, you don't have to switch the paper out. Right? Oh no no I think that one was their um, their new paper. Um, which like was kind of like oh this is like a wet sponge paper kind of like you know this is like a really thick paper. Okay. Um, the I I want to say the exemplar one was um, like it has two different chambers on it. It has like a vacuum seal that you can wow. um, you know put on it and stuff. Um, and it has like the lid, you know, it has like a, you could prop your phone up here. And that, oh, those, are the, those are the pictures that they were taking for the, the Kickstarter. Okay. Um, it also came in a bunch of different colors. Ooh. And while I like orange, um, you know, it's not my favorite. It's hard, to, so. it's hard to get a good match. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, Ajax. Lots of veteran players at my friendly local gaming store play with gray or just primed minis. Without starting my own club, is there a good way to encourage painted armies? Well, Ajax, I don't know if I have the best answer for you. I'm going to try to give you some. Because to, uh, to, to do this, I literally started my own club. Uh, so that was, that was how I did it. And listen, I, I will say, maybe don't shy away from that, to be honest with you. Because starting your own club could, um, could, could help. Uh, it wasn't, um, wasn't that much work, frankly. And... Uh, you know, it did get people excited. Good way to encourage painted armies. You know, I think um, also holding events. Um, Where painting is part of the score or something yeah. or, you know. Um, giving prizes for painted. Yeah, uh, you know. and also talk to talk to your friendly local game store, right? Yeah. Like talk to the managers or talk to the staff there and see how they feel about, you know, maybe holding like a painting competition or, um you know, like something, right? Uh, where, where you know, oh, you, let's let's host an armies on parade event where you know people come in and show off their painted miniatures, and then you you get prizes based off of like who has the better painted army, um, and and like coming from kind of like I, I guess essentially just behind the counter of knowing how stuff like that works. If you talk to your your local game store and you let them know like hey i want to start a club um how do i go about that if they're the type of game store that you know often runs events or you know has any sort of like community outreach or something like that they probably already have an answer for you um you just got to let them know like hey this is what i'm looking for yeah help me achieve it i think this is good and i'll say actually maybe the most simplistic advice i could give you Ajax, if you're not already doing it, it sounds like you probably are. The best thing you can do is just do it yourself. So be, you know, like I, I love the Gandhi quote, be the change you want to see in the world. Um, and I think being the change you want to see in the world is like very direct. Um, honestly, that, that, that's the biggest thing. Paint, um, if you're in like a, like a social media group, start putting your stuff up, um, especially if you're doing it and you're getting better and people that are like your peers are seeing you getting better, they're going to say, Wait, if he can do that, I can do that, right? Right. Um, so I would say, like, keep at it and just uh, post your stuff. Be the one bringing fully painted armies to game night. It'll catch on. Yeah. 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 I, and, like, I love seeing 
painted <coughs> on me is on the on the table. Like it, it's it's so rewarding when um, you have an event or, or or are playing a game against somebody and they. Yeah. It's it's almost kind of like a mutual like respect kind of thing. Yes. Of like hey, I see your you the time and effort that you've put into your yeah. army. Look at mine, right? And yeah. even if they're not the best painter, you can still tell yeah. that they've you know put an effort of, of more than just oh here's three colors in a wash or here's or, a prime here's, mini. Here's nothing. Yeah. Or here's, here's I, nothing. I've put them together. Here's some gray plastic. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, let's talk about what we're doing next here. Yeah. So I took this lighter gray color. We're the, just we're just going up again. Silver gray. Yeah. Okay. And um, I took a dab of that gray brown, but honestly, I kind of regret it so i'm just mixing more of the silver gray into it um and okay. then we're well, going i'm also gonna i'm also gonna then just like because i want to just do exactly what you're doing okay so i'm gonna also do this regretful thing okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm gonna do a little bit here cool so it's 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 very light yeah uh, it's it's super light and what i'm gonna be focusing on and it's not gonna be really realistic in terms of like how bark is but i'm gonna try and just swipe down okay um and really just hit the tops of most of it because i want to create some dimension with okay. this no cat i just want to say all to your right are paper towels if you need more and oh, also okay. those, <laughs> those rags uh, are up for grabs okay and they are clean brett just did laundry guys for us Brad, they, I saw you in chat. Thanks again for doing laundry. They look super clean. <laughs> they they don't. <laughs> she she's 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 lying. Um, because uh, I guess that kind of paint doesn't come off in the laundry. I hope Brett's uh, washer and dryer are is okay. Is okay? okay. Yeah, I wonder. I'm gonna get a zoom in here on what you're doing, um, so that I can also see. Oh, this is okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm mostly swiping down. Now I would say it's worth pointing out. Kat says she's, she's swiping down on these. I would say worth pointing out that because these are like this birch tree kind of style, um, birch trees have their bark splits uh, horizontally, mm -hmm. right? Um, lots of tree kits that we've worked with in the past, the bark often, like the Redwoods uh, guys that we've done in the past that Brett 3D printed, those uh, are really like vertical. Okay. So um, if you had hardcore vertical cracking on bark, would you go the other way? Would you be? Would this step be going left? You know, do you go opposite of how the bark is cracking? I guess is my, my question. Uh, not really. That's not what I'm like paying attention to. Okay. Which, uh, good, good observation. Um, what I'm paying attention to is is light. Um, because Got it. you know, it it's almost kind of like mimicking a, a Zenithal Prime, right? But like, okay. it's not going to be super realistic because I am going to be going into like the crevices and stuff. Yeah. Um, but. People people look for dimension when it comes to things, even even subconsciously. Sure. And so what I'm just trying to do is build dimension. And however you want to build your dimension is up to you. Um, but that's important to me is is building dimension and um, like a sense of of direction almost. Okay. So if you want to go horizontally. Um, that's that's okay. You just won't get that like shadow on the underside Got of it. of you know all this all this texture and stuff. Okay, super super interesting. And I have to say, um, I'm going to do a zoom on me because one of the things we do a lot here on on the stream is we'll say um, uh, you could stop here, right. right? Because we we can always add more steps, mm -hmm. and of course we get diminishing returns. But sometimes we we want those diminishing returns. But sometimes we don't need those diminishing returns. I, I'm looking at this for me, like I, I would say, I could stop on the bark here. Mm -hmm. um, and and actually, if I was doing these trees, I was doing like, uh, let's say four forests, so 12 of these for, for a board. Uh -huh. um, and I was trying to get that board finished, as, as the folks know, I will frequently finish a board in about a month. Then I would probably be done here. Okay. Um, and I might not even do the mushrooms the fun way you're doing it. So I actually really appreciate that we're doing this because I'm always like in this position where I'm like, cool, the bark's done. I don't want red mushrooms. Cool, moving on, you know? So it's kind of nice to really just be able to sit here and like super focus on uh, something and, and just go like way further than I normally would. Yeah, you also just, uh, with everything else as well too, uh, make sure you're getting on the inside as well because uh, you can kind of see it. Ooh, oops, um, oops. Now she tells me. <laughs> uh, you can kind of see it. It just depends on how you're looking at it, but it, it doesn't really matter. There was, uh, when I was painting these trees, I was like, oh, it's 
just primed. Um, and then, (laughs) you know, I had, I had everything all done and like, I was like, oh shoot. Okay. I don't want to break out like 50 paints. I'm just going to do this one. Okay. Sure. Okay. Good, good, good. Well, thank you. Uh, Panzer Scott. My daughter is building those trees for Army Zone Parade. She wants to create a spooky theme with Night Haunt traveling on a dark road through a forest. Any recommendations on the trees or setting? What do you think, Kat? Uh, paint the leaves a really fun color. Um, mm. Don't just paint them black or don't just paint them gray. Um, it, depending on the um, you know the army's colors and everything like that. If you know if it's for night haunt, a lot of people do like the 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 box color of the the green glow. Um, a lot of people have done like the blue, the oh, blue the, green, the technical one, the, the night, night haunt. Yeah, one. yeah. I mm-hmm. actually picked some up and played with it a little bit. It's kind of fun. Yeah. So. Um, Honestly, I would put that like bright, fun color on it and then maybe dry brush in like a dark gray or something just so that the trees don't take away from, you know, the army. Obviously, they're, they're meant to be support and not the main cast. Yeah. Um, but paint them a fun color. Like, don't just be like, OK, well, what are trees? I'm going to paint them gray or I'm going to paint them, you know, whatever. Get, get funky with it. Like, um, you know, I, I was trying to show off like different ways that you can paint trees. And actually I have one that I'm working on right now. Um, and I was going to paint it like Halloween themed oh, of like the underside, you know, and instead of instead of having like the dark cracks and stuff, um, it was going to be like a glowing orange color and, you know, adding in some purples and stuff and then just covering that with like a dark bark. Um, just so you can get like the cool glowing effect and stuff. Um, and we, we had said before the stream, Kat has actually painted a bunch of trees and um, we checked a few of them out and we picked the autumn one for obvious reasons. And before the stream we said, definitely want to have you come back and do some of your other seasons. But here's an example I think of one she did that kind of what she's talking about, like leaves don't turn blue. No. But this looks amazing. This is obviously her winter tree. Um, and this looks amazing. Like. Uh, I, I don't know, like our thought process is to just not put the leaves on or maybe, I don't know, do them brown, but like you did them blue. This looks so wintry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I I am a uh, sneak preview, I guess. Uh, if you sneak pop into, into any of the other stores, I am building um, a whole table where all of the trees are pink. Oh, fun. Um, because I think that's cute. Have I seen any of those? No. Okay. I'm excited to <laughs> yeah, it's a it's very much hidden in the back because it, it's just in building process and in, in my head. Yeah. But um, yeah, like the um, I think it was the new Sylvaneth terrain with like the floating waterfall and stuff. Oh, Lumineth, the Lumineth. Lumineth, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it has that little bonsai tree in it. I was oh, like, yeah. I'm gonna make that pink. I'm gonna cover it in pink flowers. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make it super cute. Um, and then you know these trees going to be pink and you know it's just going to be a super cute um table yeah that's exciting i do also love wacky colored trees yeah um, i like to get some kind of odd color especially like in the sci-fi or fantasy world like you're building a table um i i, I actually super nerded out on this when i was into train um and those of you guys who followed one uh brett and i paint up the asuriani board uh we did a lot of funky colors and and actually the very first stream we put the tufts, actually, that cat, the blue tufts that cat has. Um, let me go to this view. Here, these like little blue tufts you had. I forget what brand that is. You uh, know. Gamer Grass. Yeah. I actually put those on the tops of my trees. Okay. To, uh, they're these 3D printed ones to kind of like look like a weird uh, leaf uh, floral alien thing. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's so fun to just like get creative with these and do wrong colors according to Earth. Yeah. Um, but I super nerded out on like how sunlight works. And, you know, the theory of that most of the light that hits Earth is, I guess, green. Um, but it doesn't look green because green's like in the middle of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. So um, if, if there was a different sun, like if the sun was like a, a blue sun or a red sun. Or if it was an oxygen or something. Or something like yeah, that. Something yeah. would change the color. Exactly. Right. So you can, uh, I don't know, you can justify it if you need to justify it, which frankly, you don't. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and actually that, that uh, reminds me of... Um, I had a friend who was building um, alien swamp bases and wanted something um, that was, wasn't was just like orange Martian color. Okay. Yeah. And it wasn't just, you know, typical swamp either because he wanted it to look like 
there was a different sun or what if it wasn't oxygen, the, yeah. you know, the, the creatures on that planet breathe. And so, so that was... weird in the soil. There's so many... Right. Yeah, and he gave me, um, because Game of Grass come, uh, has a line of alien tufts. Yes. And so it has the purple, or it has the blue, it has the neon. There's like a pink neon one. It, yeah, it has like uh, neon neon pink like ends to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. With it's like, like a blue base. Yeah, so it's yes, super vibrant. Yes, yeah. Um, but they have these other ones called Fire, which are just orange. Um, oh, cool. And so I was like, okay, you know, he specifically wants to use these. Um, oh, so let's move on really oh, quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he specifically wants to use these colors. Um, how do I, how do I incorporate that? And, yeah. you know, I need, a, I need another color that's not green, that's not brown. So I picked purple. Yeah. Um, and so it just I was like, okay, cool. What's a good contrasting color with orange? Okay, purple. Let's go with that. And so I, I you know, picked out like these purple plants and stuff. And I'm like, here you go. Purple goes space. with everything. Yeah. <laughs> So um, we're going to be moving on to the leaves. Um, we're going to oh, okay. touch the bark a little bit later because what we're going to do to the leaves is going to cover up um, like a lot of this stuff okay. here. Under, underneath. Yeah, underneath and, you know, in, in certain areas as well. Um, and so that would just be like us touching the bark up. Yeah, so. uh, fans of the show will be shocked that we're painting the underside of things because I usually don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm excited about that, to be yeah, honest with you. Yeah, because I find, you know, I, these trees were meant to be on display. Yeah. Um, they were meant for people to look at them. They were meant for people to pick them up and touch them. Um, uh, this is Bordeaux red. Okay, that's what you just put down? Uh, no, 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 I haven't put that down now. I'm okay. just shaking them. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, I have brick red and Bordeaux red going. Um, and so we're just going to put down these. Oh, uh, I like this color. Yeah, it's like a soft. It's like muted. Yeah. yeah. It's a very soft color, um, which is perfect for fall. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, we're gonna, uh, these are going to get mixed a little bit here. Yeah. Um, I am going to do something a little similar to what we did with the first colors. Okay. Of where I'm going to kind of half mix them. But I'm going to constantly go back in when I go and get more paint yeah. I'm going to touch either one of the colors instead of touching my mix um, and so that will leave more red spots and more muted spots and stuff yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna just going to be and super random with it yeah now um, before we get to our next super chat I actually have a question and um, maybe you can tell us uh, Kat is actually using sort of a fancy dry brush I use like these craft store ones mm. I, 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 um, <laughs> I usually just buy uh, talk to me about your fancy, well, is, is it, was it formerly, no, it wasn't formerly a makeup brush, was it? It looks no. sort of like it was. Very similar. Very similar. Very okay. similar. No, yeah, so these are the Artist Opus Series D brushes. Um, if anyone is familiar with, like, you know, higher-end paintbrush lines, Artist Opus has done a bunch of Kickstarters. Okay. Um, and so they came out with these, and I think these are fantastic. These are actually the, um... Dry brushes are the types of dry brushes that I prefer to use are okay. really thick, dense ones. And so makeup brushes often fall under that, but makeup brushes I find are too really dense. expensive. Oh, okay. Um, especially the more dense they get. Okay. Um, and so, you know, when they came out with these, I was like, all right, cool. You know, they're a little bit pricey as far as like just cheap brushes go yeah. that are meant to be beat up. Got it. But I like <clears throat> the dense round side to it. Now, that being said, I will buy a pack of like cheap craft brushes from, you know, Target or Walmart mm -hmm. or whatever and beat them up and then throw them away. Okay. Um, these ones I like to... I should probably have some that I don't beat up. Yeah. These ones I like to, you know, uh, hold on to for yeah. a little bit um, and like, you know, I'll wash them out and stuff, which is more... Like, I, I feel like I, I take better care of these than I, than I do my airbrush. Um. <laughs> Talk to me about the thought process going on with this first... Pass because I, I, I notice, uh, is this kind of just to get the, um, the first? I just want the color on just here. Just the color. Right, okay. I just want the color on here because I don't want any of the black showing. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, one of the, I'm one of these yeah. spazzes that, I for me, I love to know why we're doing it, right? Oh, like, fair, yeah. So the, each step, I'm like always wondering, like, what is the purpose of this step? Yeah. Um, okay, that's good to know. Well, yeah. thank you, Matt, uh, as always, Matt Baker. And Matt says, tips on dry brushing non complementary or non-highlight colors. I'm thinking about doing silver blue over black for panther fur and bright blue against red for macaw feathers on textured capes f 
for Sisters of Silence. Well, we're, you're asking the right person. Kat loves painting both of these things, right? Yes. Fur and feathers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so it'll be... I guess, I guess my advice would be to um, follow the rule of, of less is more. Um, you can always add more. You really can't take away, especially if you've already done, you know, like... It's called a can of primer and it's not pretty, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, especially if you've already done, you know, like other painting and stuff. And th this is probably, you know, maybe like your last step or something. Um, so when you... When you're dry brushing things that aren't necessarily meant to be like a highlight or something, you're just essentially using the dry brushing technique to kind of merge those colors. Um, and so it's very similar to uh, how makeup is applied, actually, and how, um, you know, different powders and stuff like that are applied of you get to a certain point where this is really opaque and then you start to fade it out. This is really opaque and then you fade it into each other. Um, and you can use dry brushing um, but it's going to be not like the crazy, you know, we're just mushing stuff on, um, but it's going to be very precise, uh, very, very controlled. And so, you know, using like a really small brush um, would be better, um, even if it takes you a little bit longer, um, you, you know, you're not trying to like glaze these paints on and stuff. So it is still shorter um, in the in the long run. Um, but really, you want to use maybe probably two brushes because you don't want those colors mixing on your brush um, because then they'll, yeah. they'll start to muddy. And dry brushing, dry brushing, um, what you're saying, like, it's an illusion that your brush is cleaned right. from one color. I always find I start, like, I start dry brushing a brown that had, like, a green on it, and suddenly I have, like, a gross green, red, brown, and I'm like, what, that, thought that paint was not there anymore, like, I, I, I always, you're right, like, I always need to use, like, multiple brushes when I dry brush. Yeah. That's actually, Kat came in today, and she's like, do you have dry brushes, and there's actually a sink, a little uh, basin sink thing to the, to the right of where Kat's sitting, where I usually sit, and there's a bunch of them there, and she's like, oh, you have some dry brushes, like, well, those are all wet, because those are the 18 or 12 or... Maybe nine <laughs> dry brushes I used today while I was painting um, a Beast Claw Raider for, for SoCal. Uh, so I just like, that's why I, I, I'm nervous to get good ones because I'm like, I use, when I sit down to paint, I'll use like six dry brushes. Yeah, uh, I mean, so you do have to take care of them, right? You do have to wash them out and stuff. And like, I'm being very careful not to overload my brush. Like okay. you can see a line of me not getting it into the ferrule. Um, yeah, the, there's the shoulder zoom, yeah. So even Ooh, yeah, though I'm wow, using the good. sides and stuff, there's there's definitely, like, I'm not trying to get it in there. That is good feral protection. Right um, and so, you know, there's there's that. You gotta, you gotta pay attention, I guess, um, when you're doing stuff uh, with the nicer dry brushes and whatever, but, like, they offer so much in the form of, like, blending, which, you don't really think about when you're thinking about dry brushing, you're thinking about like, oh, how do I pick up this texture? How do I, you know, highlight this? Um, but dry brush blending, um, when you have a really dense dry brush is super easy. Um, and I, I like that because you can get such little paint, but it turns it almost into like a powder that you're just spreading over then. Nice. Um, and so it, it's, it's great. Um, do, I, do I think that these are the end all be all of dry brushes? No, I, uh, you, can, you can use whatever dry brushes work for you. And honestly, it's like sometimes I go back and forth of like, yeah. oh, this super fat round brush doesn't really fit into these things. And so I'll just, I'll get a flatter brush. That's totally fine. Um, and you said powder, and I actually meant to ask you, mm -hmm. Secret Weapon Miniature is going, going out of business. Super sad, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's upsetting, yeah. you know, uh, especially since uh, he's, he's been a long time, you know, like friend of the company of the, and everything of the like game that. Castle, yeah. Yeah, and so. They're, 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 it's, a, it's a fairly local company for those of you at home to us. They're in Sa Sa Sacramento, right? Kind mm -hmm. of he's out of there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a bummer. Um, and I, awesome products, frankly. Yeah, I, I really like their washes a lot. Um, I, I want to say their their baby poop wash is, if you're looking for like dystopian grunge, okay. probably the best thing you can get. 
Um, it's it's great on like uh, you know like the Fallout Wasteland miniature warfare stuff. Um, Maybe nerdly. Yeah, stuff, anything yeah. like you know. Oh, I need like a greenish, yellowish, brown wash. It's their baby poop wash. Um, and so yeah, and I, I really like their pigments and stuff. Um, I got really into kind of underpainting with pigments for a while. Okay. Um, and they were probably one of the few that made like a larger range of colored pigments um, that weren't just like, here's Africa dust. Sure, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, so. Yeah, they, they have a big range. Yeah, it, it's it's sad, but you yeah. know, uh, it, it's the times we live in, right? Yeah, and you know, um, there's there's also been a lot of cool new stuff coming out. Mm -hmm. So there's you know, a cycle, I guess. Um, Thank you. Oh, there's one more down here. So, okay, thank you, Stephen. Um, Evening Titans. So I was wanting to make a crystal cavern board. How do I go about making large crystals? Should I shave down acrylic dowel rods? Um, well, <laughs> um, I, my first recommendation, Stephen, is, is honestly going to be a pretty big cheat. Um, I think you know what I'm going to say, which is, Frankly, I would probably um, try to find some that are 3D printable, um, and you can you could. Um, there, there. This is something that um, is, e I think, probably fairly easy for a lot of people to design crystals. Um, so a lot of people who have just been wanting to do a little design work, it, you, you, you can go on Etsy, you can find them, or Thingverse, any place where people have 3D printed stuff. Um, I would not be surprised, since I know he's in chat, that if Brett has already potentially giving you uh, some some uh, places you could find those. So if you have the ability to 3D print, which you kind of do because um, there are sites like Thingverse, um, and Brett I, I knows the other one, I always forget it, um, uh, that there are a few out there where they, they will print stuff for you. Um, and sometimes you can get good prices. And here's what I will say, I've mentioned this before in the stream, with um, that statue that's like the, I, I have the statue of a woman sitting on a throne. And um, sometimes if you, if you communicate with the, uh, with the owner, like on Etsy, he was on, this guy was on Etsy and I just said, hey, can you make this bigger? Um, and so you can reach out to a person, you can say, could you make some a little bigger? Could you make some smaller? Could you, could you uh, up and down size these for me? I would probably first do like, just order one from them and just check the quality and see what it's like. Uh, people also sell crystals. Um, that are that are already made. I remember you guys used to sell like these boxes of them. I can't remember the brand name. Um, yeah. But um, <clears throat> crystals are out there. But the problem is, if you're wanting to make large crystals, um, typically that's that's not they're, they're not common. Uh, before we talk about shaving down dowel rods, the final thing I would recommend, as as you know, Stephen, um, I love pink foam. If you have a pink foam wire cutter, it's good for something like this. You, it can get pretty precision cuts. Um, you'll want to kind of glue a bunch of pink foam together. We've done pink foam on the, on, on, on the stream before. Um, kind of avoid that glue when you're cutting with the wire cutter. I would probably sand down, but I would be sure to keep your edges very aggressive for, for a crystal. So I, I would sand down, um, and you're going to want to use filler uh, to fill in cracks because crystals won't have like those cracks. That wouldn't make sense. So. Uh, shaving down acrylic dowel rods, to me, I, that sounds like something I, I don't think I would do that. Um, because, one, um, I don't know how, how big uh, crystals you're trying to make, if you're trying to size up or down. The bigger the acrylic dowel rod gets, the more insane that's going to be to shave for you. Certainly try it. Um, if you're thinking about it, that means you're probably thinking that you're willing to do it. But if you're thinking, boy, I sure hope I don't have to shave down acrylic dowel rods <laughs> to make crystals, I would say you probably don't. Try one of those other steps. Um, yeah, I would. Yeah. I don't think I would shave down acrylic dowel um, rods. I have a suggestion. Yes, please. Um, well, uh, sorry, wait. Before you do that, yeah. Can I? What step are you on? Are you? I'm still. I'm still. Okay, good, painting. good, good. Yeah, good. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, make sure you get the underside. Oh, <laughs> okay, sorry. Your suggestion. Yeah. Um, is. I would probably go your route of maybe buy one or two crystals that are the size that you would like them to be and uh, create a mold. 
Mm. Uh, they have really easy, like uh, super easy silicone mold kits that you can get from, you know, like a Michaels or, you know, whatever. If, if you don't have a local hobby store near you, then, you know, of course you can order it online. You guys have heard me talk about tap plastics in the Bay Area. Tap plastics. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's just a plastic store and probably most air regions are going to have something like yeah, that. Yeah, some sort of like acrylic store. Yeah. Um, uh, I would, uh, you know, get get a like easy mold kit, and then just get some two part resin, and just, uh, you, you know, if you want them to be clear, because maybe you want to put like some LED lights underneath them or something, um, just get some clear resin and uh, pour as many crystals as you need. Um, yeah. And it it's it's reusable, recreatable, everything like that, and then you know if. Like, cause a little bit of uh, resin goes a really long way. So it depends on how many uh, crystals you're trying to like make. The silicone is pricey or can be, mm -hmm. um, but the resin isn't bad, right? I, that's yeah. what I've found. Yeah, uh, it's not bad. It, and especially when it comes to, if you want it to be crystal clear, um, you can kind of get clear 3D printed stuff, but it's it's, you yeah, know, if you it, want, if yeah. you actually want transparent crystals, yeah, uh, you gotta go with like a two-part resin. Or yeah, something. I don't know yeah. that the, that there's good 3D printing out there for that yet. I, if you're gonna paint it, um, uh, watchers of the show will know that I actually dis uh, <laughs> did not recommend that because I, I I've done a lot of casting and and, okay. and that before and I hate it. Um, really? But, okay. I, but I I do agree that it's it is a good thing yes um, I just personally hate it and especially um, it, as 3d printing becomes a bigger deal um, I just I, I, I try to just get away from it even more uh, why but, is that um, I find the process to be just kind of messy um, the the silicone is, it's also sort of pricey um, like if you buy the silicone and try to make your own molds okay um, I find that it can be kind of pricey like we did like the whole Lego trick like building things with a Lego and gluing you know um but if you can get, pull it off right mm -hmm. if you can pull it off it is amazing because then you have that silicone mold and it's going to last a while and like five years are going to go by and some of your play groups going to be like oh i want to make a crystal board you're like here you go and you can help yeah you pass it along yeah um, you, so you can get you can get like the really expensive silicone um and you know do that or they they have um these like super easy it's almost kind of like um epoxy sculpt where it's like a two-part thing you just mush it together oh, okay and then you just press it oh. onto whatever you need to press it onto okay. you can get you know depends on on how spiky it is and stuff and how how detailed how it is de okay so this is good for non-detailed this is good for uh you know flat surfaces Got and it. round okay. surfaces yeah we were stuff. not doing that, and that yeah that's like why. if you were to make one of this you could probably get you know maybe like two or three pulls from it before it starts to to come got apart. It, got it, got it. Um, but yeah, no, they have like really, really cheap um, silicone uh, quick mold kits. Okay, I don't think this was the stuff I was using. So okay. that was probably, yeah, I was using the stuff from Tap Plastics and it's like 150 bucks for yeah. like the silicone. It's yeah, like usually when it, when it comes to Tap Plastics, I'll, that's where I buy my resin from. Um, and you know, when we need to make molds and stuff, cause uh, uh, Seth and I make the trophies or have made the trophies for the Las Vegas Open Painting Competition. Okay. Um, and so that comes from us <laughs> sitting in the back of the store. All right, <laughs> we need to make, uh, you know, a hundred or so trophies. Um, let's make, 20 molds. No, no, no. You remember what happened last time? Th these ones broke and, you know, this many broke and w it was last minute of this. And so, oh my gosh. Yeah. you know, yeah, we, we've, we splurge on that when it comes to the really expensive stuff. But uh, okay. just like the quick, like, you know, th some of the trophies we've given out at the store for certain things have just come from like. Oh, okay. I might, mold. I might, yeah. uh, I might get that, what that is exactly from you after the show. Okay. Um, maybe even put it in Discord. For people, because um, I am kind of curious about about that. Um, 3D printing is awesome, but you got to bug bread or we got to go hunting online for things. Yeah, you got to find the file, everything like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so when it so. comes to making molds, all you have to do is just get like one or two of the thing that you want, and then you can just recreate it, yeah, which awesome. is great. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Stephen, lots of options. I would say I would not shave down dowel rods. 
I don't know. It also could just lead <laughs> to some respiratory issues as well, too. Yeah, so. that. that. Uh, if you do do it, ha use a mask for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I don't know. Keep them. They're also going to be. It's like how to make a how to make a weapon. <laughs> almost, I feel like. Yeah. Um, let's do this real quick because uh, we always like to look at fan stuff, and today's no different. Oh, sweet. Um, so, Kat, how this is going to work, just so you know, it goes on like a cycle. Mm -hmm. So if you see something and it goes by too late before we can talk about it, don't worry, it's going to come back around. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, this first thing, actually real quick, is from Willow, who's, who's a, 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 a big fan of the show, which we super appreciate. And Willow's working with, I think, Turbo Dork, but I know it's Color Shift something. Um, and I'm a big fan of them. We've worked with them a lot on the show, um, different color shifts. And she actually looks like she got, um, when it comes back around, she got it looking good. This looks sort of like, I, I forget what she said it was, if it was blue raspberry. Um, but it can be like kind of funky to work with. You got to put a bunch of coats down often. You, yeah, when it when it comes to stuff like uh, especially when you're spraying metallics um, and stuff, uh, that's another thing entirely of like, oh, you don't want a matte primer. You want a really glossy black primer. Oh, interesting. Um, now, could you let me ask real quick? Could yeah. you? Could you matte prime black, and then could you just like do a, a, a gloss, gloss varnish? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah that works. Um, uh, it depends on you know if you are just spraying like these the Turbo Dorks or you know any other like uh, acrylic metallic. Mm -hmm. That's totally fine. Okay. Um, when it comes to like lacquer paints, though, um, you want to have a lacquer black, glossy black, primer, base black, something like that. Okay. Um, because that will get you that almost like mirror shine. Okay. And that's okay. what you're looking okay. for when you're spraying like lacquers and stuff. Okay. Um, and that gets into like, you know, candying something. Yeah. Um, and and that, that's a whole entire process. But uh, yeah, when it comes to metallics, actually try putting them on a glossy black surface rather than, you know, just a... Uh, a matte black surface and see if you like it better. Yeah. Oh, she said it's Crystal Cavern, which I, I just use in my Thousand Suns um, as well, and it's a cool color. Um, so some other cool stuff. This looks amazing. This is one of these new sister releases. Um, a chain sword with that's also a flamethrower. Classic Sisters of Battle. Uh, very beautiful. Lots of cool stuff here today. Here's Willows again. Okay. This looks amazing. This Kronos. Um, so cool. I love this color scheme. I like it, how muted it yeah. is. It's yeah, it's it's not something that like, you know, typically what people go for is like that kind of dusty look. It yeah. and, you know, pe usually people want things to like, usually stand like, out. Yeah, purple yeah. or like a vivid. I like it. Um, super cool uh, forge fiend here as well. This is actually a lot of love put in this. Also some freehand lightning on this. We've got a guy in the area that we've mentioned on the stream that I think I finally conned into coming on the stream at some point. Our friend Andrew who has a Night Lord's Army as well, and he does that freehand lightning, which is not an easy task. No, yeah. Some trees. Someone posted their trees. Love trees. Yeah. Happy same, little same trees. Kit. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of awesome stuff here today. There's something else I really wanted to gab about that was here. Da, 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 da. Okay, we'll give it a sec. Um, how are we doing? Uh, I have... I think I might be pretty much. I mean, there's some places that like my brush just doesn't want to go into. Same. But like also, if my brush can't get into it, then I'm not going to see it. Right. So it doesn't really I super like that. matter. Oh, here these are great. Uh, uh, Cicero Art, Cicero Art um, puts his name on there. By the way, people, awesome. Just hint. I love when they do that. Yeah. Um, so guys, as always, thank you. Awesome choice of fan stuff. And we had a quick turnaround, too, because we had a stream on Friday. Oh, this guy. And also a nice backdrop, the, the classic, uh, the recent release with the classic art for the Black Templars Codex. Really nice stuff this week. As always, guys, and as always, uh, we want to see your hobby stuff, so um, <clears throat> lots of you are already doing it. But if you're in the, the chat today and you're not doing it, uh, and you've got something you want to show us, please show us. Here are the instructions. When we say put it in the channel that makes sense, we mean, you know, if it's terrain, put it in the terrain channel. There is a new Discord, uh, there is a new channel in the server, in the Titan server, called Hobby Titans Talk. And kind of the purpose of that server is um, if you have a follow-up question about something Brett or I did or Kat did or any of us have done, 
um, and you want to ask, um, we try to stay on top of that. Um, uh, that's a good channel for that. But if you guys post something in that, that you know, we, we're happy to uh, put it up as well. Um, so thank you so much, fans, as always. Awesome stuff. Quick turnaround, too. Less than a week, but lots yeah. of good stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome. Where are we at? Uh, orange now, Ooh. which is going to be our predominant color, even though, um, you know, if we go back to the first tree, yeah, um, gonna... it might not look super, super, super orange, but um, this this red color that we painted is, is the under for the orange, and then we'll go back and forth a couple times between just blending in different fall colors. But, yeah. Um, it, right now, um, with just the red, mm -hmm. the look is, I'm going to put mine here on camera. Actually, let's put cats. Um, right now, the look with just the red, um, obviously you'd want to do more, but it almost has like a spring, like a uh, blossoming kind of vibe to it. Or maybe like a red maple or something. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd go for like a maple. But it doesn't feel like fall. Like, you could see that if you kept adding some more reds to this, it would be, it would look cool. You could get a cool look. Mm -hmm. But I would be like, oh, that is just like the world. The world is like, makes red leaves. It doesn't have right. like that aging coloring that you see when you when you put it next to the finished one. Yeah. This is fall. This is like, oh, there's just like a red tree, right? Yep. Um, so, okay, makes sense that we want to add orange to it, of course. Um, one of my favorite trees, um, changing, if anyone's from, uh, I guess these are probably, I'm going to say mostly in the Northeast U.S., uh, where I'm from, but there's uh, the sumacs have a beautiful way that they change, and you can look it up. Um, the way that sumacs uh, change in the fall is is they really stay green except for around the edges they start getting red and then that red kind of works its way in and they're just absolutely beautiful because they're they're green and red um, like very bright vivid awesome um, I guess that's kind of what makes fall special right the the blends of these colors yeah and and uh, I mean if you really look at birch trees they don't get super red okay. um, they get more of like a like a an orange brownish okay. color uh, they they start they go from green to kind of like a sickly green to orange to, you know, yeah. I, we don't, I don't have any more leaves. Right. Um, so, you know, we're kind of we're kind of playing with the whole realism thing a little bit, but Which is fun. it looks good to our eyes. Yeah, so. so talk to me about what we've got here. Yeah, so I have mixed the uh, the true red color that we had. Uh, brick red? The, uh, yeah, the brick red color okay. with um, just pure orange. Um, and I did just a dab of it because I'm trying to... Just a dab of the red? Yeah, okay. I'm trying to very subtly bring my blends in of, okay, I'm not trying to just slap orange on top of it. Yeah. Um, and then I am going to, for the most part, cover all the leaves that we just painted. Okay. But it, it'll give that similar effect of what we did with the bark of like, you know, you can still see that brown underneath it. Uh, we might go back in and, you know, actually go in with some pure white a little bit just to brighten it up. Okay. But it kind of depends on how we feel. So. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like it. Yeah, so it just again, just same. I'm just going to go over, you know, everything okay. uh, for the most part. I mean, I might skip some places, but that's not really like an on purpose thing, but it's more of like a happy little accident of, does this look good? Mm -hmm. Sure, let's yeah. uh, let's keep it that way. And trees, rocks, all perfect for that kind of thing. Exactly. Okay, super fun. Thank you, SP. Hey, Zach, I'm a new painter. Wondering what's your method for picking paints from base to layer to highlight and wash? And we can also ask Kat, because she's gonna have some great thoughts on this. How do you pick a color scheme? Any advice on making your own washes? Thanks. Okay, lots going on here, lots to unpack. Um, let's start with wondering what's your method for picking paints. Um, but I guess actually the, maybe the better first question is how do you pick a color scheme? Um, I think for, for me, and, and certainly I want to hear what Kat says about this after mm -hmm. I find some she's Okay. Um, certainly for me, I think, wait, sorry, real quick. I'm going to ask SP, I'm going to get to you in a second. Okay. And we want to give you a good answer. Um, this is going all over? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, so, sorry. Uh, I'm like interrupting myself. <laughs> uh, it's going all over, but we're going to do one after that's like a little more orange. Yes. Okay. We're going we're gonna to mix in some yellows and some golden yellows and okay. stuff. And then probably go back in with the red just to bring it back. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I was seeing what the f end product was and I was like, uh-oh. 
It's a lot of push but and now, pull. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes total sense. Um, picking color scheme. So uh, this is a great question. I, I always pick colors, color schemes, like let's say for an army, um, but we can also talk, talk terrain. I, I frankly, if I'm painting an army, I usually have some kind of thing that I'm trying to accomplish, or I just have a color that I love and I just wanna, wanna see, uh, see it all over an army. And so frankly, armies like Space Marines and Asuriani, uh, Drukhari and Tau are great, for, and Tyranids are great for this. Armies that are like, I have armor, paint my armor a color, right? And that's why I've got my Tau and that kind of greenish color, or uh, Cerebite green color, and then my Asuriani were a blend of, um, uh, really made coral. I've always loved like coral as a color. Um, and then typically I, I, I'm looking at sort of the army, uh, and again, we, we can talk outside of an army, but I'm, I'm looking at the army and I'm just saying to myself, where will there be opportunities for different colors? Um, f so for the Asuriani, there's they're kind of anywhere, and I ended up just putting like stripes um, on my guys, um, and uh, the helmets are sometimes different colors, so I did like ivory. I'm always also kind of thinking about warm versus cool, and typically I like my armies to be um, hovering around one or the other, um, maybe with something pulled in. So mostly reds, but maybe a little bit of like a blue or purple. Um, picking color schemes is something I love to do for terrain boards, for, for armies, if I do something like, a, like Aeronautica. One of the f points of advice I, I would give you, SP, before, um, before I, 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 uh, we, we get Kat's thoughts on these, is I would, I would say, um, something like Aeronautica or like a kill team is great for trying, for experimenting. Um, like even, maybe even just like something, you know, because you don't want to just pick up a box of like a unit and be like, all right, I'm going to experiment on this unit. I'm going to experiment on this, this $110 Tau Riptide. Right. And like, cool, what am I going to do with him? Or I don't like it. Or I don't, <laughs> I don't want to have a Tau army, right? Hopefully you wouldn't do that. But um, something that can be, even if you don't love it, you can use it. Like, I, that's what I do. Like, uh, my, my uh, Imperial Navy Aeronautica Army, um, actually I got my paint recommendation um, from, from you on that, you might not remember, but it was the, I forget what the MIG, and it was like the, uh, it's the white that is like, um, uh, I'll show them to you and you'll remember. Anyway, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it was a specific white paint that, that, um, that kind of behaves a specific way. And I ended up liking it a lot, but I wouldn't do any art like full army in it um, for sure. So I would say like find something that's good to practice a color scheme on. Like pick up a towel, pick up enough towel to do a kill team. Pick up pick, pick up enough uh, primary space marines to do a kill team, and like j just paint them up and have a kill team or some other game, Xfinity or something like that. Just pick something up small and finish it in like a wacky paint scheme. What do you think? How do you pick color schemes? So I pick color schemes um, by uh, finding like a picture that okay. I like of not even just a miniature, just, um, oh, I really like this, this sunset picture. Okay. And just picking out the colors from that picture. Okay, well, you know, why do, why do I like this picture? Why do I like yep. this landscape? Why do I like this, right? What are the main colors in this? Um, and oftentimes, actually, um, I would suggest if you have like an Instagram or something of uh, following a bunch of um, digital artists mm -hmm. because yes. oftentimes yes. they Wacky will stuff. have really crazy color schemes yep. and if they're really cool, um, they'll also have like little side um, splotches yeah, of like here's yep, yep, yep. here's our, here's my color scheme right and then you just go from there yep. even just googling. Uh, color scheme, blue color scheme, you know, purple color scheme, yeah. fall color scheme, um, will will give you some really cool results of like, oh, this is, you know, I didn't I didn't think that when I look at this picture, I didn't see the blue sky, but that's actually probably why I really like this picture. I see because it's so it's, blue yeah. and these yellows pop off of it like so well, um, and there, so that's how I pick. There's colors. um. There's a thing saved in my, my, my bookmarks on my browser at home under Warhammer 40K. And it's, of all things, a BuzzFeed article that's like 27 places that will give you serious wonderlust. And it's like all these amazing places in nature that people just took the best shots. Like one of them is like these salt, uh, these like kind of levels of salt flats in Turkey where it's like this, these mixtures of like 
salt pools with crystal clear water because it's, it's from salt and it's like very turquoise and white. Mm -hmm. um, I also love looking at um, just cool, like, like Kat's saying, but also like art um, from like different time periods. Um, I've mentioned on the stream before that I really love like from, uh, from early middle and mid middle ages like Islamic art is super cool like okay. where they mix like brown and like azul bright yeah, vivid just blue really like really vivid almost like neon more yeah. yeah more stuff from Spain um, all that stuff so uh, you poke around like uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna sound um, like the we're gonna sound like total hippies but totally. Expand your horizons, like just look at, I think digital art is very cool. Mm -hmm. I actually, um, about a year ago, uh, whipped up some projects for Brian um, for how to paint some of his stuff and sent him uh, a bunch for, actually for this fall board okay. of like all these colors from a digital artist who, who had done something uh, that kind of captured what I, what I was going for. So uh, definitely. Now, a couple other questions. Here's a good one for you, Kat. Okay. From base to layer to highlight and wash, how do you how do you pick your your paints? Like specific like uh, you know formulations and brands. Yeah, like and stuff? well, it, like you, what's your overall thought process? Um, and yeah, like how much do you stick with one brand? Do you, do you like to go up and down and stay in the same brand, or, or mm -hmm. will you mix brands? Oh, I will one hundred percent mix okay. brands um, because I am in the very privileged position of being able to go to conventions and shows and stuff. Um, I get also just being able to go to the shelf and be like, yeah, and, and just like mm, I want to look at things, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, we sell a lot of art books in the store as well too. And so just being able to just flip open, you know, a book by you know, like a, God, his his name is escaping me, but um, something like that of like, this is blowing my mind right now. Let me see, you know, what he what what was used, right? Yeah. Um, and so I I think. Um, any physical media or, you know, you can get PDFs of like different art magazines, like especially with the miniature magazines and stuff like the Weathering Magazine by AK. Okay. Um, those are those are fantastic guides of like, you know, whatever. And they'll show their products. Sure. Right. But um, oftentimes in the pictures, even they'll have things that they don't sell. Um, and so you can kind of like be like, oh, that bottle. I want to look into that brand because it was in this picture of, you know, of, of a magazine that I really liked. And so, you know, I, I will mix a lot. Um, and off, like my favorite white paint ooh, is, ooh, ooh. This is a good topic. What's actually your... by uh, Monument Hobbies. Their titanium white paint is probably the best white paint that I um, okay. have ever used. Um, okay. It's very thin, but... Oh, well, that's, um, that's what the feature of my favorite white paint, which is uh, the Minotaur Skull White or Snow White, okay. like those two, yeah. Yeah, very yeah, thin, yeah, yeah. It's very, very, very thin, but very white, uh, very buildable. Um, but like when it comes to colors, I guess, of like, you know, what do you use as your base? What do you use as, you know, like your overall uh, layer paint? Yeah. And, and then highlight. Um, it depends on what you're, you're painting. Um, like if you're painting skin, um, my base color for most skin colors, unless it's like an alien skin color, is actually um, black red. Um, and so it's super, super, super dark, mm -hmm. but um, it gives life to your skin mm -hmm. because you gotta you gotta remember that like you know there's blood vessels underneath your skin and and oftentimes you know you're very warm and you and it's usually like a reddish color unless you are painting a more Un of like undead a, and then you do blue right right yeah. unless, or unless you're painting you know hyper realistic like olive skin tone then you use a different color because okay. you're not you're not trying to get that red base to it um, but finding colors on the color wheel of like, okay, well, this is my predominant color. I want to paint this blue. How do I make this like really pop? Okay, well, maybe my underpaint should be orange. Um, or maybe uh, it depends on how vibrant you want it to be, okay. but you don't just paint a blue on top of a blue. And so, um, well, you do. It just depends on what you want to do, right? Uh, so if you're going to have your base paint stick out, then obviously you want to pick like complementary colors. Um, but if you're trying to give extra life to your paint and extra vibrancy to something, then you kind of go the opposite of the color wheel. Okay. Um, 
So it depends on what you want to do. And then highlighting, again, depends on what kind of light, right? You got to, you gotta, when you're painting models and miniatures, a good way that I like to go about it is, what story do I want to tell? What, what life has this tree lived? What life has, you know, this orc lived? What life has this, you know, uh, tank lived? Uh, and go from there of like, okay, well, this is, this is where I'm picturing it. Would it be a golden light that's coming through? Would it be, you know, fluorescent light that's coming through? And using that to kind of base your undertone for, you know, the different paints and stuff that you're using. Yeah, like thinking about like um, like if it's an army or whatever, like that that army is bringing its world with it, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, don't spaz about that, and that's also going to help influence your basing decision, right? Like um, that that's okay. And so like if you, if if you want to say like, well, look, I, I know that I'm going to play this uh, Lumineth army all over all kinds of different train boards, but I want them to always can always be bathed in golden light when they're always attacking at at like. The golden hour, like right. like uh, six a.m., like uh, that's okay. That's cool. That's like what makes the game fun, right? Like, don't right. yeah. I, I think that's that's good advice. Um, that's really that's, that's, these are really hard questions. I find uh, maybe your last one, SP. Any advice on making your own washes is the easiest one to answer. Um, how, have you made your own washes? Oh, I will always make my own wash. Okay. I oh, will use these, which is wash. actually, I, I learned about these from you as yes. well. Yeah. Yes. So um, uh, Meg makes uh, these wonderful, wonderful uh, products called Transparators. Yep. Um, they have a non-matte version, but they have recently come out with a matte version, oh, okay. which I love That's a new. lot. That's yeah, because okay. if, you, if you put too much of the normal Transparator in it, it ends up making your paint look kind of satin, which is fine um, if that's what you want, or you can always just matte it back down with like a matte varnish. But the transparator from MIG is essentially just a glaze medium. Um, and glazes and washes are the same thing. Yeah. Uh, it just depends on how you apply them. Um, and so what I like about it is that it thins your paint, it, it gives it, um, a lot of body, but it doesn't have any alcohol in it. Does it make it runny? No, it, right. it doesn't have any alcohol in it. It doesn't break your paint apart. Okay. And it doesn't break the surface tension of your paint, which is what you want with a wash. Okay. You want it to stay together. This is how I've described it before. I've thought, I think of it as, uh, I, I've never made a wash with it really, but I think of it as um, it, it makes my paint, it, it, it thins my paint mm -hmm. um, without giving it that kind of runny feel. Yep. Um, which is, yeah. I yeah, guess. yeah. Uh, the runny feel usually comes from your paint breaking apart. There's cl clean water also. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Actually, when it, so we were talking and we were answering someone's question. Um, yeah. But uh, I was finding that my paint was drying out too quickly on my tree and it wasn't getting into the little like black crevices in the middle. Okay. So I just wet my brush and then just kept going okay. just slathered it on there and then just spread it out that way got it um so i'm gonna actually here we'll do a yes okay uh i'm st i have like a little more black showing than you so i'm gonna i'm gonna catch i'm gonna fix that yeah Which is just, just probably just wet your paint just wet, the yeah, okay. just wet your brush wet your paint just mush it in there okay um we're not trying to be like super precise with anything okay. but yeah. Um, oh, it's making me so nervous to do that, though. Right, because that's not what you're used to yeah, with, yeah. with dry brushing. Right. But, uh, you know, it's different. It gets you out of your comfort zone. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, with, uh, you know, you, with you saying earlier, like, oh, those, those brushes are wet. And I'm like, oh, that's okay. Yeah. This is interesting. Yeah. I'm, like, freaking out, actually, right now. No, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> it almost, it almost I'm okay. feels like it's going to, like, run <clears throat> out. Um, but... As long as you keep working with it, you're, you maintain control. Yeah. Um, and then you can always, you know, blot your, your brush if you need to. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, SP, great question. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like the one that you asked that I, is so hard to answer for me. How do you pick your paints? How do you pick? Yeah. Um, well, okay, no. How do you pick color scheme? Um, because the only way I really kind of think like to to answer that question, if I'm honest, is to say that uh, God, it's the worst answer. 
Um, but it, I, I feel like I don't, oh my God, this is, I, I hate saying this, but I'm going to say it. Uh, okay, here we go. Don't hold this against me, anyone. <laughs> I don't pick my color scheme. My color schemes pick me. Oh. Uh, meaning, I know, I know, I hate myself. It just naturally it. comes no, to you. No, <laughs> it's not that. It's sort of what you're saying. It's like I see something that I'm just like, whoa. It's just a whisper on the wind, and you're like, yes, purple goes here. <laughs> yeah. There's just something like, like I, I don't know, for whatever reason, uh, like, like I, 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 there's a color I love, and I'm like, oh, I want to, I, I can do that. I can do this army in that color, yeah. and then this secondary color will look good. Um, frankly, uh, the uh, Suryani I paint the coral, uh, like back in the early 2000s, I had like a shirt that was that color from Eddie Bauer, and then it had like these dark blue stripes. I was like, man, this shirt's cool. I look good in this shirt. Um, and then actually, like I had that shirt forever, and um, uh, Megan actually uh, <laughs> cut it up and made a, as it got too old for me, uh, and as, as I got too old for it, I guess. And um, made like a stuffed animal out of it for me. So oh, I, st cute. I still have that, but like that kind of influenced that color, that color scheme. So I, I don't know, like that's hard. That's a hard one for me to answer without sound, sound like a total <laughs> and just being like, oh, they pick me because that's. I mean, me. I feel like I feel like that comes with experience of working with colors and and you know paying attention to what looks good with what, right? I, I just feel like that eventually comes to most people who have been doing this for a long time and who start to pay attention to what colors look good with each other, right? And then, you know, you start to look at things differently of like, man, I really like that shirt. I like those colors. Yeah. Let's paint that on there, right? And, yeah. you know, I feel like with newer painters and stuff, that's not an immediate reaction when they see something that they like or when they see you know a painting that they like or whatever yeah um but as long as you mention it to people and you put that thought in their head they start thinking about it okay um well, good now yeah good. so just to just to describe it a little bit more of like that's probably what that is um and you know it's not just like a you know i heard a, i heard a whisper um, yeah no no it's not that yeah. it's not, i'm not that crazy um now, I will say one thing I've noticed, Kat, as we're working here on the underside of the tree, mm -hmm. uh, and this is kind of interesting, I feel like the under part of the tree takes paint a little differently than the top part of the tree. Oh, definitely. And I will definitely go as far as to say I feel like it's a little bit worse at it. Yes. <laughs> the, um, uh, I am wetting my brush a lot more. For the um, and okay. just basically dripping the paint in there okay, um, okay. because for the most part people aren't really going to be like oh you didn't you didn't do this it's the underside of a tree it's terrain it's you know not a big deal yeah. but what i don't want is like obvious like black uh splotches okay um because if you if you think about it light filters through leaves really well yeah um and so you want it to be light in a sense, but I mean, it's still, it's still like darker. Like if you really want to think about it, the top layer underneath would be a lot lighter than the, than the bottom layer underneath. Um, just because, you know, not a whole lot of light has been able to penetrate through. Right. Um, okay. That makes, but you know, it's, it's terrain. I'm, I'm just shoving paint in there and watering it down and getting it in there, almost treating it kind of like a watercolor. Yeah. Okay. Um, and like we'll go back in and touch up the branches and stuff. Okay, it's good. Not, I was gonna ask. Yeah, it's not I anything was be crazy. Like, are your branches now orange almost? Oh yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's not anything crazy. Um, and you know, even if you miss some touch up, it's like oh, it's you know, it's a uh, just light reflection. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's some there's 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 bat there's like. Ones you don't want to miss, and there's ones that are cool to miss, right? Yeah. Um, and it, the terrain always has more than it that more that you can miss than that you can't. Um, right? Often models are the other way around. I find. Right. Um, Kat, talk to me about conquest. What's? Yeah. What do you like about it? I asked because actually somebody uh, somebody brought this up last night on, on tabletop Titans. Okay. Um, that they were getting into it. So what's what's the deal? What t talk to me about it. And this is not an ad, by the way. <laughs> I just, just oh, gen totally an ad. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I am here uh, for the man. Uh, no, um, conquest. Uh, what really? So it really caught my eye um, a couple years ago at Adepticon. 
they, I want to say anytime they go to a convention, always, and they're there, um, always go and talk to them. They're so passionate about their game and their displays are beautiful. Um, so a couple years ago at Adepticon, they were still very new. Okay. They had two armies out, which were the Hundred Kingdoms and the Spires. And the Hundred Kingdoms are the humans okay. of the universe. And the uh, Spires are an alien race um, from a different planet. But essentially in the lore of Conquest, uh, they would embody like your typical elves oh, okay, in a okay. fantasy setting. Okay. Um, yeah, so I I got to chat with them, you know, just as a, a company rep for Game Castle, and I was like, you know, sell me on your game. Why do we want this? Okay. Um, and so I talked to them, and it seemed very, very, very early. Um, and so we're like, okay, cool. We'll see. We'll see where this goes. And our big thing with uh, Game Castle is we run a ton of events. And so if your game doesn't have, you know, organized play, it's a little bit harder for us to like, yeah, exactly, really get into it. And they didn't have it um, at that point. They do now, okay. um, and it's uh, it's uh, called. I think their their Path to Conquest um, is their like kind of slow grow uh, league thing. Okay, but. Conquest now, um, I feel they have five factions now. Okay. Um, they have a ton of lore, which I took a major deep dive into. Okay. Um, and I find it fascinating. And honestly, just I don't play 40K. I okay. don't play Age of Sigmar. Mm -hmm. um, I used to play Malifaux, but that kind of fell off for me with the new edition. Okay. Um, and so I just kind of feel like a bit obligated. I'm a director of a to like, <laughs> of to a game some kind store of company. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel kind of obligated to play, and so um, like I don't know. Just conquest seemed easier to me okay. um, to get into, and yeah. so I tried it out, and I am in love with it. Um, yeah, they just released the uh, revised rule set for so 1.5 rule set, um, which changes a bit. Um, I have their newest army, um, or one of their newest armies, the Badroon, which are the orcs of the universe. Okay. And just the lore, even just talking about the lore, I'm just like, this is... This is a really cool universe. This is easy for me to get into. It's not so huge and intimidating like 40K. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not Age of Sigmar, which not super into the lore for okay. Age of Sigmar. Uh, I don't I don't want to I don't want anybody to hate me for That's that. That's okay. But I'm um, not big fan of of let's blow up the universe and start all over because, you know, whatever. We didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we we talked about doing like a partnership with with uh, Parabellum, who's a company that makes um, conquest. That yeah. makes conquest, okay. and we're like, you know, let's let's really give this game a good hard push, um, and so that's where my like hard interest started, and then I'm like, I'm gonna pick up these feathered raptors. Um, oh right, right, right. Which I was like, cool. I I had really no major, yeah, the apex predator too. Um, I had really no major like, oh, I'm gonna get super into this, you know, whatever, because I don't have time, honestly. Yeah. But I am now finding that I am making time for this game. Oh, there you go. Um, it, just a little bit about the rules. It has alternating. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, activations, yeah. which I like a lot. Yeah. I played one game of 40k and I sat there for the majority of the time. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that appealed to me. I yeah. like their kind of almost, um, chess-like, I'm gonna think several moves ahead activation system with their command cards and with their command deck of, you know, I have a deck of... Are we doing Bordeaux? Um, we're actually gonna go into, uh, yellows and goldens. And, okay. you know, we're gonna... Oh, you are just gonna, cleaning? Yeah, yeah, okay, I was just okay. cleaning my brushes. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. Um... So I'm gonna mix this muted, um, muted orange with this like uh, golden yellow, dirty yellow. Okay. Um, Let's put this in the glam cam. Yeah. Before we before we add yellow, I think the orange is kind of is kind of interesting as we look at this here. Um, earlier I was saying with the, when just the red was on that I didn't think we were at a place where we could call it fall. I actually think the orange 
Like if you stopped here, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you don't want to stop here, but especially because you see it right next to the one she didn't stop at. But I think if you stopped here, like if you were, you know, cranking out a bunch of terrain for your, for your pals and um, your gaming group, you could stop here and have an awesome autumn tree, frankly, mm -hmm. I think. But of course, you know, seeing it next to the one where she didn't do that, that's kind of hard to say, right? Yeah, so now <laughs> we're going to get into not covering everything. We're going to okay. get into touching uh, just certain parts of it. Okay. And so this is where dry brush blending really comes in handy. Um, but yeah, so, so with a Conquest Command deck where you make your deck that has a picture of all of your, your regiments and units and stuff like that, you stack it and you place it face down. Okay. And you and your opponent do this um, at, at the beginning of the round, um, and then you roll to see who has priority. Okay. And then you just flip those cards, and that's how you activate your units. Oh my gosh, this is like, um, there's this old 40 uh, Games Workshop game, uh, if Megan's in chat, it's called Battle Masters, and it did that, and it was like, so Hero Quest uh, got a lot of people into, into 40K, Mm -hmm. And into just all this stuff, right? Like miniature war gaming, and that was like back in the early '90s. But they also released this one called Battle Masters, which like nobody knows about. And it has a similar kind of like you never know who's going to get activated. But that's so it's so fun. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And it, you you get certain um, things like uh, draw events with your warlords, um, where if you draw them from the command stack you can then choose to activate the draw event, which, depending on what it is, gives you certain things. Um, okay. like, like the turn the tide draw event is, is usually the uh, base draw event that you would get on your Warlord, which is like, okay, you draw your next command uh, okay. card and they activate. Okay. And so it lets you kind of skip that a little bit. Um, but... Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's a, that's like, there's other, yeah. there's other things, too, like, uh, with First Blood, which is their, their skirmish version of the game. Um, okay, I can remember what it was called, yes. Yeah, okay. so, it, you know, you have, you have different things of, like, instead of, instead of your units being on, like, army movement trays, they're just individual ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which, I honestly, I'm not into movement trays myself, but... Okay. Um, that you know, not 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 a deal breaker for me. Yeah, but. yeah, and then uh, just just the game overall, they have they have overlapping rules, and then you know there's different things with first blood. Um, but what I also really like is um, rolling for reinforcements. Not all of your units start on the board, um, and depending on what kind of unit, um, you roll to see whether it comes in or not. Um, and so light units on round one with first blood, you start with no units on the board. Um, light units, you roll um, and at, on D6, and a three and up, you get that unit. But you okay. roll for each light unit that you have. Okay. And then round two, again, it's, um, uh, I, I still, I think it's still a three and up with, with light units, but now your medium units, you can start rolling for them. A five okay. and a up. Uh, five and up, you can have your medium units come in. Um, and then, you know, third round, your light units automatically come in if they haven't already. Um, your medium units now move down to a three, and now your heavy units start moving in at a five. Got it. And so I like that where it's not like it's just an overwhelming tide of everything. Yeah. It's, it's very realistic in terms of uh, strategy and war strategy. Um, yeah. Of like, you're not always going to get your reinforcements right when you need right. them. Right. Um, and so that'll be, that, that's a, sometimes it makes or breaks battles of like, sure. I didn't get anything. Sure, yeah. Uh, shoot, okay. Um, but yeah, so, so we, mixed, we mixed these orange and yellow um, to make a more of like a, a muted uh, yellow okay. color. And now I'm just going to, like I mentioned earlier, more light is going to come in on the top, okay, and then less light comes in on the bottom. So okay. uh, it's not necessarily how leaves age on a tree, but it looks good. to my eye, it looks good. Okay, and so I'm just going to like dab and stipple parts of things. Oh, okay. I actually probably want a different. Maybe I can be okay. With yeah. So I I like Conquest a lot. Their models are really cool. Um, the thing is, it still feels like an early game of like when you go onto like their their army builder um, 
uh, thing on their website of like, it shows you everything, but not everything is out yet. Yeah. But that then allows you to be able to proxy in models, build your perfect list. And then, you know, as long as the base sizes are correct, then you're like, oh, well, these are, these are Valkyries. Um, even though Valkyries aren't out yet, it still gives you the stats to be able to use them um, okay. in battle, which I, I think is really cool. Now, um, are the mod is the scale like a little bit bigger than 40K? It's a tiny bit bigger. I don't know if it's like even- Is it noticeable or? That crazily noticeable. I wanna say like, you know, your, your basic units are more like primary size than anything else. Okay. Um, and then it, it gets bigger from there, okay. which I think just makes it easier for you to paint. Sure, um, right, yeah. Yeah. My, I guess a complaint would be uh, they need better assembly instructions. Um, <laughs> yeah. Their models and their their uh, boxes aren't as over-engineered as Games Workshops are. And you can tell, especially if you, you know, are predominantly like a Games Workshop, you know, fan. Sure. Um, you can tell, you know, that their models need, okay, yeah, they're, th they're 32 millimeter. Um, their models need a bit m more engineering. Um, I don't like their flat surfaces of like, you know, the arm will go here at some point, yeah. um, but like it slides up and down and I you're see. just kind of like, all right, I'm gonna just go plastic glue it here and this is where it's gonna be. Got it. Um, so yeah, I, I did put them together. I did put my Raptor Riders together with, with uh, super glue at first, which, I was kind of grateful for it because I broke off their arms, I think, like two or three times. As opposed to plastic glue, right? As opposed yeah. to plastic glue of like, okay, I got to cut this off now. Um, but yeah, uh, after that, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to plastic glue and plastic weld these things on. Okay, so I'm going to, real quick guys, since I did the top few here on mine, I'm going to real quick toss on the glam cam. We were just saying like, oh, you could say you're done at any point, but like, look at the top few uh, layers now with the yellow compared to the ones that are just the orange, like it adds a lot. So while that is the case that you can kind of stop at any time, um, you know, it can be hard to be like, oh, it, it looks so good right now. Uh, and you're like, oh, I really like the way, my, the way my tree looks right now. But then you're like, what would happen if I took one more step? Right, what's um, the next step? Exactly. Yeah. And, and even this step, this next step, super easy. Super easy, yeah. And so, um, yeah, and it's, it's yeah. Uh, uh, the thing, uh, going back to Conquest just a little bit more. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I like the fact that their rules are 100% available for free online. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't have to buy the books. The books are very handy to have. Um, but another thing with their army builder, which it does need a little bit of fine tweaking and stuff, like the newer mechanics aren't yet in their army builder. Okay. Um, but you make your list, you save it to a PDF, you print it out, and what comes with it are all of the special rules that um, correspond with your, your list. Okay. And so, you know, you don't have to have the rule book, especially if you know, you know, oh, okay, I know how to activate this. I know, you know, what, what, you know, all of these things mean. Um, right. So I appreciate that, but, you know, it, it's still, you can still tell it's, it's a fairly new game. Yeah, and you just, it, it's tough. It, it must be an uphill battle. Um, I, I know Parabellum is not a totally new company, but I, I feel like, it, I, I feel like like props to Corvus Bell and, and Infinity and stuff mm -hmm. because I feel like to even survive, um, you know, like you said, you have to build that community mm -hmm. and that can just be so hard to do. I mean, quite frankly, uh, you know, we played Aeronautica in the, pa the past few weeks a bit and everyone's like, oh, X-Wing, I miss X-Wing. And it's like, you miss X-Wing? Like, everyone was playing X-Wing five years ago. Like, yeah, no, no one's playing X-Wing. And that's yep. Star Wars. Like, yeah. if people aren't going to get behind Star Wars, it's so... It's it, so weird. But and it, it's crazy, too, because X-Wing used to be the biggest event that we would run. You know, yeah. even even with 40K and, you know, um, with Infinity and, and War Machine being as big as it was uh, yeah, a few a, years a, ago, yeah. um, X-Wing was the biggest event that we ran. We had, I want to say, like over 100 X-Wing players. Um, I know, I remember. I yeah, went, I, and I, I so, Mountain View. Yeah, yeah was it, it, it yeah. was insane. And so now to see it like kind of just dwindle away, yeah. but like it's hard to pinpoint, um, 
where exactly that fall off happened. Yeah, Did I, they just I, not recruit people or, you know? I, yeah. I mean, I, I guess one of my theories, and, and I'm sure there's lots of theories out there, and uh, I don't know, we need like some social scientists to really help out here. But um, one of my theories is that like, so with something like a Star Wars based thing, my, my guess is that you you get into it when Star Wars comes out. Right. You love it, and then you either the type of person that will, that you then you fall into three categories. Like you're going to stop playing it because your love for Star Wars waned. You know your hype. Maybe your love it, it for it comes and goes with the movie. Comes and goes with the movie. Yeah. Or two, you're you're going to say, "Cool, I want to play a different game." Oh gosh, all the Games Workshop stuff has an insane community and presence all over the place. Right. Or you just stop playing any of them all together. Right. Like, so I, it's like almost like you probably. I have to imagine to some degree X-Wing was good for Games Workshop, <laughs> potentially. Like, it made more people play it. And, you know, I love Games Workshop games. I do. Um, but I don't necessarily always want to just like a monoculture. Like, it's, it'd be nice if there was uh, some other things that stuck around a little more. I know Malifaux kind of, I feel like it resurfaces every now and then. And every then, once like, in a while. Creeps, I want to yeah. say as far as, like, skirmish games go and miniature games go, Malifaux is the easiest to learn and to get into. Okay. Um, and so when anybody is just like, I want to get into something mm -hmm. um, and I want to paint cool models and, you know, I don't want a massive community, but it's not completely dead, I go, here's Mal Malifaux, right? Yeah. All you need is this crew box and a deck of cards and that's it, Yeah. go to town, right? Yeah. Um, and Malifaux was what I started with okay. um, when it came to miniature painting and, and you know, hobbying and stuff like that. That's That was my thing of, you know, oh, I, it was mainly just an aesthetic thing. I wasn't really thinking about like, oh, how easy is it? Cause I, I yeah. didn't know. But you know, steampunk horror fantasy, that, yeah. That is just, you know, it's so great. And their their models are so beautiful. They're very delicate, but they're really beautiful. So Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of um like what drew me to Conquest is is the models themselves. Um, you know, their 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 plastic models are, you know, very reasonably priced. All of their characters are twenty four dollars base. Yeah. Um and all of their characters are in resin. Okay. Um, and so they have really fine details on them. Like my predator um, character, he has like scarification uh, oh, tattoos cool. on his chest and they're there. And like, there's no like, oh, this is super smooth or anything like that. Yeah, like yeah. The, the details on the feathers with the Vadroon is, is fantastic. Um, and so I wanted to get into a war game. I wanted it to be something that I could have fun painting and also be proud of painting at the yeah. end of the day. Um, and that was Conquest for me. Yeah, because you, you know, you do, um, we talk about this in the stream a lot, um, you do a lot of individual things, but um, it, it can, it's, it's fun to like just say, oh, cool, I'm going to paint an army, right? Like that's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's, it's a different, it's different. Yeah, definitely. Where are we at? Where are you at? I guess I know where I'm at. I'm at, yeah. or at least I think I know where I'm at. Yeah. I'm doing this on the underside. Is that am I? Are we Kinda, not? I would stick more to the edges and stuff. Um, oh, so, on the underside. Yeah, because really, okay. uh, what comes through is is the light filtering on the edges of the leaves for the most part on the underside. Okay. Um, and that's so what you kind of want to get. So do less on the underside. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Not gonna um, complain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially after we talked about how like. Well, the underside is a little bit of a pain to paint. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I'll touch it up a little bit. But like for the most part, my main goal with the underside was just to get some color. If someone picked it up, they wouldn't just see, oh, you didn't do anything. And that's what they would see from mine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they usually would see like the base coat and that's kind of it. Okay, <laughs> the primer. <laughs> Not the primer, come on. That's fair. Just the color after the primer. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, um, it, it depends also, but overall. Like lots of times on my models, I will, but on terrain, I usually don't. Oh yeah, but I mean, with with models, I get through everything. But most of the time, I don't paint unless it's for a competition. Then you have to, you have to do everything. Oh right, right, yeah. right, right. So what's after? What's after this? This is exciting. Yeah. So oh, after this is we're bringing red back. Um, we can if you feel like it. Do you feel like you want to? Um, because it now it's just kind of like a personal taste thing. Do you want to oh, bring I some see. red back in? Well, um, do you feel like it's necessary? Uh, let's you know. do it because yeah. um, one, then you have three matching trees. Yeah. And then 
Yeah, you should have three matching trees. Awesome. Yeah, so I just picked up this brick red again. Okay. Um, and we can go for more of like a, a like a very red red, like this deep red here. Um, it just kind of depends on what you want to do. Do you want to bring in bright red, deep red, you know, whatever. Okay. It's actually kind of crazy how adjusting the edges on the bottom, mm -hmm. um, I feel like really made a big difference on the bottom. Uh, as opposed to, well, like I did all of it on this one, mm -hmm. um, but just doing around the edges of the bottom, actually, I don't know, it, it really does add a lot. Yeah. When you do it. I mean, again, I'm never going to look there, but still, <laughs> some people will, like you Some people might, right? Yeah, of definitely. like, oh, this is a cool tree, awesome. And then they want to see all the little details, especially if, you know, you do what we're going to do to the mushrooms and stuff. So. Right. Yeah, so now it's just the same thing with the red. And you're doing, uh, was it was it Bordeaux or uh, was it brick? A brick red, yeah. Brick. Bordeaux is a little bit too pink to be able to bring this back in. Okay. Um, but, and yeah. It's kind of, kind of I'm similar. Ju I'm just doing the same thing that I was doing, just, you know. Okay. Kind of painting a picture in my mind of like, oh, yeah, you know, there'll be more red towards the branches or something, right? And, like, going from there. Um and then maybe even covering some spots that like maybe I missed before. Okay. Like, oh shoot, I didn't paint that part. Um, let me just blend this in. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's Ooh, not. Oh, it immediately, it immediately adds so much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're just kind of warming the tree up a little bit more. And again, it's like it's a push and pull with everything of of personal taste, right? Like I don't want these trees to look the same. If I wanted them to look the same, I would paint them all at the same time. Oh, I see. Um, and you know, that's like it. that's like alien to me. I'm like, I because I would paint them all right, like, I'm always yeah. like, oh, okay. But the cool thing about these sculpts, even, is that their sculpts aren't the same. No, you're um, right. And They're... so, you know, it, it kind of lends itself to being able to be painted differently. Yeah, um, like you know, the the fall tree and the snow tree were on the same table and it didn't look super weird they just looked like magical trees of like yeah, oh, okay, yeah, something's yeah. going on right? it does look like yeah like there's some kind of like sylvaneth magical yeah um but this is great actually we've had a lot of people ask us um in regards to like sylvaneth army in age of sigmar about like doing different seasons and stuff um like oh i want to do a a, a a winter season sylvaneth army an autumn seasoned one uh this is useful for that well at least if you're gonna do autumn for winter, you'll have to wait till winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and so, I mean, I, I, guess, I guess going back to that, to that question before of how do you paint a, or how do you, how do you pick your color scheme? Yeah. Um, I kind of just group stuff together of like, oh, when I think of like a leaf, what are the colors, right, of, a, of like a fall leaf? All right, yeah. cool, I'm gonna pick these, right? And you know, if you wanted to go in with like a muted green as well too, and put that in there as well, maybe maybe they all haven't changed. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would look great yeah. as well too. Like the sumac I was talking about earlier, you'd almost do like a vivid green earlier in the process. Mm -hmm. I think, um, although I guess the red would kind of turn it brown. Mm -hmm. oh, you have to be careful. Oh no, yeah, you would do the green now. Yeah, and you yeah. would just put that pop of green in because, yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, where are we at? Is uh, that leaves? That's that's leaves. That's that's, leaves? that's, that's majority of the tree. So let's uh, check them out. Yeah. Okay, yours is yours is like a little smoother and maybe a little more. We'll see how they turned out a little different. I feel like it's smoother. Okay, let's see. This is Kat's, and this is mine. Maybe yours has a little more red in it. Also, I think you just have a better dry brush than me. And yeah, well, And you're yeah, also just better I, at it than yeah, me, Yeah, I course. also think uh, you got a little scared with uh, the water. Mm, um, yeah, having, having it go down into there. Yeah. But, I, but I'm okay with, with, uh, mm -hmm. with the look on both of these. But I, uh, yeah, I should... Uh, I think yours definitely has more pop to it. Mine, mine looks more blurred, and I think they both look great. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, let's continue. Fun. Thank you, Michael Cody. Uh, thanks for joining, Kat. You've been very informative, and it was nice of you to treat Zach like a normal person, despite his horrible Lord of the Rings opinions. Um, sort of wish I had not read that out loud, but yeah. Um, <laughs> he's talking, uh, everybody hates that I actually like the Hobbit trilogy, as far as the movies go, better than the Lord of the Ring trilogy. And I just get 
raked across the coals in this community for that. Opinion. You know, I tell people all the time, it's okay to be wrong. Um, <laughs> So that's oh that's man, I was totally hoping Cat was gonna come to my rescue on this. And no, say, not at all. Return of the King <laughs> is probably one of my favorite movies oh, of gosh. all time. Uh, <laughs> and same thing with the Two Towers. The Two Towers gives me chills every single time I watch it. Oh, there, there, there's somebody in the community. I can't remember who it is that like that's that's on my side. There's like one person out there. One. One person. <laughs> um, before we get to Jarl's, uh, there, there are dozens of us. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm very outnumbered. Before we get to Jarl's super chat, what, what are we doing next? We're going to paint the base. Okay, fine. So now we have this uh, cool brown, which is uh, this gray brown, um, versus the warm brown that we were using before, because I want to differentiate it yes. from the tree. And uh, we're going to do that thing that scared you earlier, and we're going to incorporate a lot of water. Okay, I'm just going to do it. Yeah, do it up. Um, so I'm going to get my brush wet. And because it is very dense, it's going to soak up a lot of water. I'm going to tap it off a little bit. Okay. Mine's going to be less dense. Yeah. But I'll, I'll figure this out. But you can see here, I've almost broken it down into a glaze at this point. Okay. Um, and then I am going to be not neat at all whatsoever, and then just paint that on there. And it's going to be very thin. Um, and I'm probably going to do a couple coats of it. Okay. Um, but when that is drying, we can work on other stuff as okay. well, too. Um, and then, you know, you just want to make sure you get around the roots of the tree as well. If you feel like it's too thin, um, just add a bit more paint to it. Okay. Um, but really what I want it to do is to soak into... The cracks? And the yeah, little... like this sculpt in particular, the dirt, like the texture it's of the dirt is, is sculpted in. Yeah, very, and so it, it quite has, a bit, actually, right? Um, quite aggressively, yeah. It, it has a lot of like pockets and holes yes. in it, and I don't want like air to be trapped into it. So it. that's that's where breaking down the paint comes in handy. Okay, awesome. Uh, thank you, Jarl. I'd just like to echo Michael's sentiments and say thanks for coming on and somehow not being mean to Zach for his unbelievably bad takes with Lord of the Rings. Almost almost the same uh, almost the same super chat actually. Almost the exact same. That's oh, okay. So as you can see, I am not making this up. I am, uh, I am fairly, uh, fairly, fairly bullied uh, <laughs> by our loving fans. And um, I, I think it is uh, <laughs> for this completely <laughs> justified. Yeah, um, everybody does. So it, it's it's a thing, and uh, <laughs> you know, I, you get through the day. Yeah, um, I, that's fair. Everyone can be wrong sometimes. That's yeah. okay. It, it just means you're not infallible. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think it. I think it's a, a feature. It's uh, As Brett humbling. Say. Yeah. Um. It it it. <laughs> it builds character. Yeah. As, I mean, you know. You know. Then yeah. that's a nice way to put it, right? Yeah, it's a great way to put it. So thank you. I do appreciate. Um, <laughs> oh man, I you know actually it's funny this weekend. Uh, I, Megan and I almost thought about watching one of them, and I was like, you know what, I should watch The Lord of the Rings. Uh, I'm really getting, I'm really, I'm really getting raked over the coals here in the community, I, so I should, I should just watch it. I know I'm not going to like it better than The Hobbit trilogy. I do like it, for what it's worth, um, but I, you know. What, a, okay. We ended up not watching either. We watched, I can't remember. Tell me, Megan, if you remember. Oh, a bunch of Stephen King movies, which is also really fun. Okay, okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, so, so I, I like the horror aesthetic. Yeah. Um, but I am very prone to um, suspense and jump oh, scares. Okay. And so, while aesthetically it's great, I, I am a big baby when it comes to scary movies. So, okay. you know. Yeah. I'm gonna see how mine looks. Okay, I think I'm doing. Yeah, so right. it's it's fairly thin. A okay. lot of a lot of the uh, the black primer will come through. Okay. Um, but while that is going, we can bring out, uh, you know, some finer brushes. Okay. And paint our mushrooms. Oh, fun! Yes, I'm excited for this. Okay, mushrooms. Now, here's what I will say, and I'm gonna paint these mushrooms with you, of course, but I will say probably when I do a board using the, these techniques and making trees sim similar like this, I probably won't put the mushrooms on. The big reason is because the mushrooms are like, when you handed me the tree, it's sort of the first thing I saw. Yeah. Um, which is cool, but I almost feel like for a terrain board, I might not want that. Okay. Um, and I, so I think what I would do, and I'm not gonna do this today, uh, I, I think what I would do with the mushrooms is maybe, uh, tell me what you think, Kat, maybe pick 
Oh, maybe take red mm -hmm. and just do like a dry brush on them. Like pick them out a little bit, but not so so aggressively. So aggressive. Uh, that's yeah. fine. I, and I mean, I think I think however you want to do it um, is fine. The first tree of uh, the series that I painted was the um, the spring tree, uh, and so I painted my mushrooms purple, purpley blue. Um, because I just wanted something fun, um, because I was like, you know, I want to make these interesting. I want, I want them to stand out. I want people to, um, pick them up. I want people to look at them. And if that's the first thing that people notice and that's what draws them to yeah. it, uh, then, you know, by all means. Heck yeah. Yeah. It looks amazing. Okay. Let's do this. I'm excited. Um, so what's the steps here? Yeah, so uh, I took the oh, what was it called? Uh, brick red. The brick red, okay. yeah, that we just already have on our on our palette, right? Yeah. No need to get any more. Um, and then I am just going to paint it. Literally, just paint it. Just literally paint it, okay. um, and you know, try to get like in one pass as opaquely as possible. And like you know, I know it's like always like a oh, less is more. You know, the more layers you paint on, the the smoother it's going to look. They're mushrooms. Um, it's fine. Yeah. Also, I mean, to that to that end, while that is true, um, if you're using a wet palette, which, by the way, you know, Kat came here and said we're not going to dry brush. Um, and, you know, I always tell people, like, well, if you are doing serious layer painting, like brush painting without an airbrush, you really do need a wet palette. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you need it. Like, and it's, it's a number one hobby tool. If, you know, I always say, like, I frequently try to sell people on... Um, can will you just uh, like air, start airbrushing? Like I was saying earlier, like we, are you willing to do that? And if they say no, I want to brush paint. They say okay, well at least get a wet palette mm -hmm. like immediately because I, I feel like the whole like put on putting on a ton of thin coat things is true to an extent, but I also find like just with like a good wet palette and keeping my keeping control of the consistency of my paint. Right. That I'm frequently not like, like, yeah, yeah, like one or two maybe if the consistency is good. Yeah, and this is this is why uh, normally when I, I find a paint line that I really like, I will buy it in mass. Yeah. I have... AK is actually very good for this. I have every single one of the third gen AK paints. Yeah, it's, it's really um, good. And it wasn't a question of like, oh, well, you know, maybe I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use it eventually. And knowing me of, oh, I haven't used this paint yet, I'm going to find something to put it in. Um, oh, Kat, you know, I should ask you this. You know you know what other... I mean, the line I also really like and find is very comparable mm -hmm. um, is I, Citadel, but Air, even with my brush. Like, I just use their, their Air paints only now. I don't really use their layers. Okay. Um, unless I really need, like, heavy coverage, like with a yellow or maybe, like, a gold or a silver, mm -hmm. um, then I'll get the layers. But what, what, do you ever use their Air paints just, like, with your brush? Their Air paints. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> because I don't like the bottles that they come in. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, we talk about this a lot. And I find Citadel paints to be way too expensive. Oh, uh, I see. Um, I like, you know, like Nolan Oil or, you know, whatever. I like their contrast paints when yeah. you put them through an airbrush. Oh, okay. I think that is, that is the best way to use the contrast paints is when you put them through an airbrush, especially over like a Zenithal Prime or something okay. like that. Um, they are fantastic. That's interesting. I should but say that. Um, I find Games Workshop with the quality that they offer. It's great quality. However, what, I would rather pay three ninety nine for a bottle than you know five forty something for a bottle that I don't like the bottle of. Yeah, the actual bottle. Now, you guys sell these at GK. Have you used these yet? The little. Uh, the Dr. Tabletop yeah. uh, drop toppers? Yeah. Uh, no, because I just I just don't have um, Citadel paints. I see. Yeah, but I've played with them a lot, um, and a lot of people really like them, and they're great. Yeah. Um, I think they are fantastic when, you know, if you're going to be using them on the air paints um, yeah. or on their washes. washes That's and, what and I've done yeah. so far. Yeah, I put like, came in here the other day uh, and put one on like Agrax, one on non oil, mm -hmm. and just like on everything. Uh, thank you, Zeeb. Appreciating the stream as I work on these blue robe sisters. It's been really chill and interesting learning about Conquest a bit. Watching the trees is really tempting me to do an ent. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, 
after I painted these, um, it, you know, I usually when I get inspired to, to do a full table, um, I'm biting off way more than I can chew. Uh, and so I'll paint something small and then it comes up with like, a, oh, I want to do this grand epic table. Mm -hmm. um, uh, snakes are my favorite animal. I want to do a crazy, like, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, like Viking mythology, the, the world leader snake. Okay. Um, I want to do a giant table where he's almost like half buried in, in the table and stuff. And then he's coming out. Oh, fun. Um, and so usually when I, when I paint stuff like this, it is then leading into me doing like a bigger project or something um, and then work comes up and then I, and then I sure you can't right uh, yeah. but like there there are very few times where I can and it's usually like a, oh, okay instead of like a whole entire 40k sized table or you know AOS sized table um, I'll do like a small three by three okay um, and then you know uh, like a long time ago Seth and I built a really cool uh, drowned swamp table where that was my first time pouring resin like mm, clear yeah, resin. No, I've, yeah, I've seen that a bunch. Yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. where is that right now? That's at San Jose. That's at uh, the San Fremont Zay. store. Oh, it's at Fremont? Yeah, that's at the Fremont store. And okay. actually someone wants to, to buy it, so I don't know how long it's gonna stay at the Fremont store. Um, but yeah, and, and it's, it's usually like, okay, I'll build something small. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I, I always get really inspired. So I, I like that. I like watching other people paint stuff and like coming up with like ideas of my own. I think that's really fun. An ant. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. Have you done any, any Lord of the Rings? Have you played the game ever? No. No. But I like their terrain. I like yeah. the terrain a lot. Um, and cool. actually. Some uh, stuff just came out. Was. Um, I forget. Somebody in chat's gonna tell me. Uh, they just released. Uh, they just released something. Uh, I forget what it's called. The one that starts with a G. Um, somebody in chat. If you guys know, the one that just came out, um, let me know. Let us know, please. Yeah, no. I like I like the terrain a lot. Um, and actually, a lot of the terrain was was what I was gonna use to flesh out that world of like you know the snake eater. Oh yeah. Stuff. Um, or the the world eater stuff. But yeah, it uh it just takes time to build. Um, and I don't have like a dedicated hobby space. And so usually when I hobby, it's like I'm, I'm bringing my entire kit, setting it all yeah. up. And then, you know, I have to factor in time to break it down and stuff too. So. And people are like, well, you, you, you like manage a store, don't, but you, you kind of move around to different stores. Yeah, I go, I go to every single one of the stores um, in the area. So uh, you like, you have to be like, okay, back to my Fremont project today, yeah. back to my San Jose, and that's kind of annoying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> like these, these predominantly live at the Westgate store. Right. And so when I'm there, I'll you know, get to pluck at the trees every once in a while. Um, so yeah, I, I've just put a base layer okay. paint on them. Um, they're not quite as opaque as I want them to be. They're actually not quite as bright as I want them to be. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna go in with vermilion, okay. um, which is a very orangey red, okay. but on top of the um, brick red that we have on here right now, I think just one layer of it would be fantastic. Fun. Yeah. So you can see how bright that yeah, is. Yeah, this is a nice color. Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm <laughs> In charge of a lot of things with Game Council, which is actually really great, because um, you know I started off as just a you know run of the mill sales associate, and the fact that I'm able to grow the company is is it's fun, right? It's rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, now I, I go to all the different stores. Right now, though, I am taking all of my conquest models with me. I'll pack oh, them up around. and stuff because that's. That's been my big push of like, you know, I want to, I want to paint my conquest models. I want to get this done. Yeah. So. So are you watering this down at all or kind of just using the consistency out of the bottle? Or oh, I'm the, just using the consistency okay. out of the bottle and like whatever water is on my paintbrush. Okay. Um, and then just slapping it on. Now also, maybe you guys see um, the AK cat has added, has painted the top. I guess as she's opened each bottle. Yes. She puts a little bit of the paint here in the, on the top, which is. Which is clever. Yeah, because uh, you, you can kind of see like off uh, camera over there of like the container that I keep them in. Yeah. Is a clear top, you know, uh, oh, like hobby craft container. 
Um, and so, so you can look down and see them. Yeah. Now, um, question with these, are you, I'm going to actually zoom in here on you. Mm -hmm. Are you um, kind of leaving the darker red in the back a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not you know, towards, like... Towards the bark. Yeah. Okay. So just to get like a little bit of a gradient going, um, but like I'm not trying to force it, right? If I sure. happen to get the lighter red on it, then I'm not like, oh shoot, let me go back in. Um, but it also just makes it easier to paint because I I'm, want to avoid the uh, the bark and getting it on there because we just did it and right, and I right. think it looks fantastic. So yeah, I'm not trying to go back over with that because trying to cover up red with white it just sounds like a nightmare to me oh i see yeah sure right like it, it's not the cleanup we want to do yeah so if i can avoid it i can avoid it if i if i can't then you know it's okay i can yeah. go in there it's not it's not a big deal or maybe it's just a weird side growing mushroom <laughs> yeah or light reflecting yeah exactly <laughs> So awesome. Yeah, I made them bright. Um, yeah, that my helps. my idea with them was I wanted them to stick out. Yeah, they, they um, do. It's great. So yeah, awesome. Now we're going to go in with uh, this titanium white. OK. And, and oh, do the dots. And do the undersides. Oh, do the undersides. Yeah, because okay. I don't know if you noticed, but the underside of those mushrooms are white. Are um, white, yeah. And it just makes them stick out. It, it because the the undersides of the mushrooms are sculpted in. Yes. Um, but yes, while we're at it, we're gonna do the dots do as the well dots. too. Okay. So. Now I might have my work cut out for me. Um, I actually painted the underside red already, which is stupid of me. <laughs> um, but we'll see. And that's I, okay. I think the coverage will work. I think we'll be okay. Uh, yeah. I honestly, if you want to keep it like a pinkish color, because that's kind of what it's gonna turn into. Yeah. Is that that's totally fine. Oh yeah, I think I think we're okay. I kind of like it actually. Uh, fun. Yeah, because I, I like you know they took the time to sculpt the undersides yeah. of these, and I kind of want to just be like, hey, yeah, I paid attention to this. Look it. Um, so yeah, I'm not being like, oh, I need, I need, you know, everything or whatever. I just want to accentuate the fact that they're there because I, I find that keeping them black just makes them look like bark. Yeah. Um, and that's not what I want to do. We want to acknowledge it, you know? Exactly. We don't necessarily want it to, we're not like trying to blow anyone away with the underside of a mushroom. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially it, when there's this many and it's on the side of a tree, um, you know, and they don't glow or anything like that. But you can, you can make them glow. You can get like uh, glow in the dark paints and stuff yeah. and do it up, but. Um, and that was what I was thinking of, like, ooh, I want to do that, but it, it's too much. Well, no one really plays in the dark, so. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually, I, I actually want to ask you about that um, after the stream and about painting a tree to reflect nighttime. Okay. And we'll talk about that um, because I have some thoughts on something that could be fun. Uh, but the point is that when I brought it up with some of the guys, they were like, "Oh, that's not possible." And of course, anything is possible yes. with painting. Yes. Now, Megan is super chatted and she wants to know, Kat, can you give Zach some tips for keeping his hands squeaky clean while hobbying like yours? And I don't know if that's true. I saw her putting paint on her thumbnail. I Yeah, I put paint on my thumbnail. Um, and actually, I'm probably the worst at it because oftentimes when I'm airbrushing, I'm too lazy to put on gloves. And um, yeah, I don't. I, when I'm airbrushing and I'm holding my mini, to test my spray, I'll spray on my hand. Um, I don't even do that. Yeah, so <laughs> I have like a scouring sponge, and I'll just use the rough side of it Ugh. to just scrub. It, you know, I'm it's not just, doing this. It's again. just exfoliation. I'm not doing this. Um, but uh, I think I'm being a little bit more like cautious of it. It is also like when I am trying to form a fine point with my brush. Yeah. Um, I will touch it to my thumb um, and my thumbnail and stuff because I, I prefer that than touching it to the mini yeah. or touching it to a paper towel or even the wet palette because like that just takes, um, you know, paint off of it or adds more water to it or something. How do yours look right now? Mine are mine are pretty bad. Um, this is 
<laughs> this is from dry brushing. That said, I've been painting. I've been only painting today. Yeah, we didn't since... touch any blue, so that's, that's on you. That's me. Yeah. This is all me from earlier. Yeah, this is dry brush. Uh, I don't actually know what this is. This might be airbrushing. So there's actually a product that we sell um, called Magic Goop for your hands. Yeah. And it's actually meant to very easily... Like, um, take paint uh, off of your hands and okay. stuff like that too. Um, and using, um, going going with uh, the makeup world and, and how that crosses over into hobbying, you know, I can I can talk forever about that. Um, using an oil as well too, to remove the paint okay. um, makes it so much easier. And it, it's very similar to how you would use an oil to clean off uh, makeup off of your face and like break it down that way. Okay. Uh, so yeah, using like a, you know, just makeup remover works as well, or micellar water, stuff like that. So yeah, now I'm going to, I'm going to put, actually, I'm going to do this because I have these sitting here and we should use them. Yeah, please. So these are artist acrylics. I was wondering what was going to happen with these. Okay, yeah. Fine. And because we're going to be using such fine dots, I want this paint to be opaque the moment I touch it to um, the mushroom. I don't want to have to go back over the dots or anything Got like that. Got it, interesting, okay. So. I like it. Yeah, these are artist acrylics. They're, they're really thick. Um, and you just thin them out with water if you want to use them as like layer paints and stuff. I like oh. them a lot. They, if you thin them down, I find that even thinning them down to a glaze and you put the um, cap onto your wet palette, yeah. Even coming back the next day, they hadn't separated at all. Okay. Um, which I like a lot. They they mix really well together. They're meant to mix together as well too. Um, do you thin? Are, did you thin yours a little bit with water? Uh, I mean, my brush is wet, okay. but you know, it it's nothing crazy. I'm just trying to get the little bit on the tip, and then I'm just gonna do dots. Um, can I ask? Is it as I zoom in on you here? Is it is it fair to say this might also add a little bit of dimension or no? Um, is that a goal? Not really. I'm gonna say the more more dimension is added with you know you know maybe making the darker red towards the base of the tree stuff yes. like that. Um, if you were to add dimension with this, then you would want to maybe like highlight the dots, um, or you know do like an under. You know what? Dimension wasn't the right word. Okay. Tex texture. Yeah, texture. Texture okay. is totally cool. Um, you can use bumpy paint for this as well too. Um, the only thing is, is that bumpy paint will dry bumpy. What I find with like artist acrylics is that even if you put a glob down, it will kind of self level okay. and try to smooth itself down. Um, but yeah, we're just, you know, we're making them into little toadstools and that's not how toadstools grow. Oh, good. I'm so glad you knew that. But I didn't want to have to actually you, yes. but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it doesn't matter. It looks awesome. Yeah, and and it everyone can get it into their heads of like exactly right. It's a yeah. mushroom. Everybody except for the people who are like, well, actually. That's fine if people want to. Well, actually, me. Um, well, I get well actually it all the time. So yeah. you work you know, at a it, game store. You get it well actually. Like that's like part. Of, that's like like when you ha go through and they like tell you now they have to tell you like uh, OSHA standards. Like you will have to lift thirty five pounds. Like it's on the description, right? It says. You have to be actually, be prepared to be actually like two dozen times a week. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, yeah, it's stuff like that, you know, which is why uh, when you were very wrong about Lord of the Rings, uh, yeah. I had an immediate comeback. Yeah. Right? yeah it's, it wasn't very wrong. I mean, it's. Well, actually. <laughs> well, actually. Um. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Well, I'm never going to live that down. That'll be, uh, that's going to be hard to come back from me but I'll, right. I'll get through it i'll probably forget it's okay and then someone will bring it up no you and won't because yeah. I, I like i said it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah there, there'll be a point where as you're painting these it's, dots yep. you'll, you'll get yep, like a yep. dry tip and so just rinse off your brush <laughs> as soon as going. you start to tell me as soon as i say there'll be a point i connected with the fact that i just heard you clean your brush and i was like hmm, this is something's gone on here yeah this is awesome though um what else would you use these for can i ask the artist acrylics? Um, I use them for just normal painting. Uh, I will thin them out with water and then just use them as layer paints and stuff. I like the fact that, um, 
you know, they they are very opaque. They play really well with each other. They're super smooth. They're just great layer paints in general. I think um, I forgot. I forgot there was a Kickstarter of a of a company. Um, um, oh no, I, I think Chimera Colors or something came out with um, Artist Acrylics. It was something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, they they came out with their own stuff and it and it became super popular. Um, these are by Abtolung, which are the um, company that they distribute through AK, which is why we get them in the store. But okay. they're they're. Um, oh, you guys have these at the store? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was going to ask where I can get these. Yeah, at the store. Um, they are predominantly like an oil paint company and oh, actually their, um, their now oil paints, <laughs> <laughs> their oil paints, uh, are, are in a very similar tube. So they're, they're really easy to mix up. Yeah. Um, and until you actually open them. But, um, yeah, I like them a lot. They don't have a very wide color range. Okay. That I guess I can't say I'm not too surprised by that. Yeah. But. Because they are meant to to be mixing, mixed yeah. together but that makes sense they they thin very well um and it's just water that you need to thin them with you can thin them with the transpirator and stuff if you want to break them down into glazes okay um but it's great when you when you're trying to paint like opaque white dots and not have to go back over them to have like a thicker white paint to would them. you use these for eyes like painting a human or like uh, an elf or something that has like normal eyes? Probably not. Uh, too, too thick or what do you think? It, I mean, I wouldn't just use just a white, right? Like okay. uh, uh, I would use a, like a light blue base to okay. that. Um, and that just gets down into like, you know, I, like the whites of your eyes aren't actually white. But would you use uh, artist acrylic? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. No, they're, they're super smooth. They thin out very well. Um, even if, you know, they're really thick out of the bottle, you can thin them out to be just as thin as these other paints that we were using. Yeah. So. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so I think we're ready to uh, our, do the base. Yeah. Um, now, let me ask, maybe what we'll do, um, since we're getting close to two and a half hours, maybe what we'll do is do any more painting that uh, needs to be done on the base, and then maybe just talk about some of this other stuff you you brought because okay. um, we want to we want to uh, be able to show you know we can we can show them the one you did already. Mm -hmm. um, does that sound? Does, yeah. that sounds good. Okay, let's do um, unless there's any that you feel like you like really need to be shown. Um, I actually have a question about this stuff. Okay. But um, yeah, let's paint some bases. Awesome. Yeah. So we're just gonna paint the rocks now, okay. and we're just gonna use the same like silver paint and the gray paints that we were using the, before. Which one is that? Do you know? Um, that that looks like was, sky. No. Yeah, we didn't use this one. We didn't. We didn't so did it we was it was these ones and. Well, we that didn't one. use this one. Yeah, we used we? two different two different grays. It was this one and this one. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, see, now you do have a formula because now this is on YouTube's. That's and fair. It's true. And it's I've fair. actually I, Normally, I would just be like, okay, whatever. I'm just going <laughs> to do this. But I don't want to get a new wet palette paper I, out, so I'm just going to use this. I, I actually have painted stuff on the stream, and then like a week later, I had to finish like 10 more of the model or whatever. You just go back and watch it? Yeah, and <laughs> I'm, I'm a monster about like, I like I write these big documents up that, that tell how I paint everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'll do that. But I've gotten a little lazy sometimes now. I'm like, well, I guess if I need to, I can always just go back and watch the stream. I don't. I hate <laughs> doing that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, because I just, I, I don't know, I hate like hearing myself explain something to myself. It's yeah, kind of I, like, well, shut up, dude. Like, I also just, hate listening yeah, to myself talk. Yeah. I think a lot of people do, yeah. but yeah. Um, so I'm just going to dry brush these rocks. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's where, you know, this stuff uh, comes uh, from. Sky gray. Yeah, okay. and uh, um, I'm gonna get majority of this paint off because I'm gonna be true dry brushing. Of, oh, I, I just okay. want to hit the edges. Okay, I'm not trying to paint this rock, um, you know, gray. I'm just trying to hit the edges. And if it's too if it's too wet, like it just was right now, um, I'm just gonna dab it off a bit more and then just keep going. Right, I'm not gonna try and like fix what I just did. Got it. It's a rock. Um, yep, yep, you know, yep. no big deal. But you know, now I know, okay, I'm going to dab off my brush a little bit more. And it's probably because my brush 
is a little wet from before of me cleaning it, but that's okay. What I love about the GW, and just this is just classic Citadel models and Games Workshop universes, but I love how this is just like this nice, beautiful tree, but you get down to the bases, of course, and there's like, oh, there's skulls. Oh uh, yeah, there's dead oh, things. Oh, there's dead, yeah. there's like skulls and like half buried rib cages and everything, of course. Like, yeah. I actually hadn't really even thought about, like I almost forgot that we were like painting something for a hobby, and I was like, oh, this is just like this nice, cool tree that we're painting. This is like like 3D Bob Ross here. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, oh my gosh. There's like a, a half buried skeleton looking back up at me next to this rock. Yeah, and that's kind of the fun part of, of true dry <laughs> brushing, especially when it comes to bases and stuff, is um, like you, it's almost like excavating kind of like, yeah. okay, I'm going to bring like out. Like reverse. It's like reverse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring out the details and stuff. And like, you're like, ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was there. Because, you know, you went over it with a lighter paint and it doesn't then blend yeah. into the background anymore. I guess like that. Yeah, that is that, that is something like you're talking about uh, different miniature companies. That is something I always like. Whenever I do something that's not GW, um, it just depends what it is. Not that and nobody can do it, right? But. If I was like something 3D printed, maybe that somebody made and it's pretty cool. Um, I'm like, oh my gosh, dry brushing is like doing nothing on this, or like like this technique is not going very far on right. this model. Um, and I don't think I'm quite skilled enough to always know how to like not have the the citadel crutch and be like, oh yeah, if I just dry brush this, the edges are going to be perfect and everything's going to just just get grabbed and it's just going to work so well. Right. Yeah. So I'm just gonna get into this lighter, slider the, gray, the silver gray, silver gray okay. um, and just take as little of it onto my brush as possible. And um, that's also going on the rocks. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 And you're just, again just creating dimension with yep. this one. You're you're not trying to get it everywhere. Um, you're just gonna hit you know s some small surfaces and stuff. Okay. Um, you know I got paint on my finger, but I'm gonna wipe it off and just. Uh, yeah, get, not me. I'm just going to leave it there. Keep the reputation of having clean hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, you know, it was funny. When I, when I was t doing more teaching, uh, I, I frequently would paint during the day and then go um, teach different classes at night uh, with adults, usually high school kids or adults, sometimes little kids. And um, I, would, I would have hands like this, and uh -huh. I'd be, like, pointing at the computer screen and stuff. And, um, uh, you know... It's just funny when eventually people would ask, right? They'd be like, "What is what is happening? You know, <laughs> what happened to your hand?" Because it'd be like it'd be like my towel, which are like this green color. And oh, like and underneath it starts purple, to look it's like, like purple and green. green yeah, almost, yeah. It, like, it looked kind of gross at some points. Um, but you know, what are you gonna do? I guess get that stuff. Maybe I maybe I will pick some of that up. Yeah, yeah. it's called like magic goo or something magic like that. Goo. Okay. Um, it's like it's a it's like a jelly consistency, like a jelly soap I consistency. I, I, it's really either. weird, I'm but uh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm immediately, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, just a just a <laughs> comment um, earlier because someone said I was I'm really strong with my strokes. Um, I'm just using the tip of my brush. I'm not like jamming it in there. Okay. Um, and so. Uh, my brush is okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, it's fine. It's also meant to, you know, be beat up a little bit. And actually, with these guys, um, they start to build up kind of a texture of their own, even if you like uh, clean them off pretty consistently. Okay. And, or consistency, uh, consistently, um, they start to kind of build up their own unique texture as well, which I, I like because you know it, when they're too nice, you start to get like uniform. Sure. Strokes and yeah. stuff, and that's not necessarily what you want. Now, yours actually, I'm now realizing, yours actually has a large rock. Yeah. We'll do a zoom here on yours. If you can tilt and show us that rock. Mine um, had had only baby rocks. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I show, had... Show it if you can, just like where we're at there, yeah. If you can see, I had little baby rocks. Yeah. But, but your large rock is nice. I'm, I'm actually asking you to do this so I can see if I got the rocks right. Okay, close enough. Good. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I had some little rocks and stuff too, but I, I liked this one because um, it's almost like the tree's growing into it and into, splitting yeah. it and stuff, yeah. So now we're going to, um, I guess, less precise brush, um, but still more precise brush of, uh, we're just going to cover the tree branches um, that are on the ground um, or like in the rocks and stuff like that. Okay. Of, you know, okay, we're just going to slap paint on. Right? Oh, like, I'm not... Oh, I see. Okay. Getting and that is uh, 
This is uh, the the brown gray, the gray brown color gray brown. because it they're branches that have fallen off of the tree. Okay. Um, and so maybe they didn't age the same Got it. as the tree. You know that that's the story that I'm going with in my head. <laughs> okay. Now, by the way, I don't know. Speaking of brushes that you can really beat up, I've mm. been uh, blabbing a lot about the the Citadel synthetic brushes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've tried them. They're kind of fun. Um, you can beat them up. Um, I was saying that we had Bridger was on the stream and he, uh, I, I, I didn't, this, this, I'm not trying to call him out, but I didn't realize he had, he had not like completely cleaned one off on a Wednesday and then he sat it down and then on Monday I came back and saw it and a combination of that and the, this cleaner, the brush cleaner we have, uh, totally like back to normal on this thing. It's awesome. Kind of, kind yeah. Of away. Yeah. I haven't used them myself, but um, they're very soft from, you know, just getting them into the stores and stuff. And honestly, I was, uh, I was just wondering like how people would take to them. Right. But I mean, I think for the most part, most people don't really care. Um, well, that's why I think they're good. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you don't care um, and you want to like beat a brush up, mm -hmm. like it's, it's good. Yeah. yeah awesome. Um, I'm going to take this like silvery color, silver gray color, and then almost just edge highlight. The brush? <laughs> These oh, the, bones. Oh, the bones. Okay. Um, normally I would do like a bone color uh, or like a bleached bone color, but honestly what we end up doing with the tufts end up covering a lot of them. We'll cover, yeah. And so I do want them to stand out a little bit. And again, you want it, yeah, you, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I also think that like gray, like light grays are, is kind of cool for bones mm -hmm. um, in this context. Okay, so you're doing, do I, you're doing, uh, kind of describing it as like an edge highlight. Let's zoom, let's yeah, check it. Yeah, I'm see. just using the edge of, I guess it's not really edge highlight, right? I'm just using the uh, like side of my brush and just like side swiping yeah, down. Yeah. I'm not trying to like paint the entire skeleton or anything like that. And that's how you would a tried like something is using the side of your brush. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not being super precise with it. And actually it was going on too much. And so now I'm just slapping water on top of it to hopefully blend it out. Um, and I like where it is now. So, you know, it's, it's enough to where it sticks out from the base. Um, and I think there's a couple little baby skulls over here. It's enough where it sticks Ooh, out from the yeah. base, um, but it's not like, you know, blinding. Yeah, and you don't want that. Like we talked about that a lot on the stream um, about like going overboard on a on like a skeleton and a piece of terrain, mm -hmm. and like going in and painting it with you know bleach bone and doing like a wash and doing everything, and then like a highlight color, like brush painting all of it, um, and then like there's a road sign and you paint that like vivid red, and mm -hmm. like suddenly like. Your eyes, when you look at the thing, it you're doesn't like, know where to focus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no like nothing is drawing your eye, right? Like on or this, or everything this... is, and it's the same, right? It's yeah. Like I guess, I guess one... nothing specific is right, drawing right. Your like eye. it's yeah. one way or the other, same yeah, thing. It's, right? Yeah, it's it's sensory overload at that point, and then your your eyes just kind of start to glaze over, and everything starts looking the same. And so when it comes to like you know little details and stuff, they're meant to reward people for taking the time to look. And they're not necessarily meant to like jump out at you. Right now, I brought this up last uh, last week or two weeks ago. I said if you're gonna do that, then you need to go like full Lisa Frank. Do you remember like Lisa Frank yes. stuff? Yeah. yeah. Like then it's cool, right? Yeah. Like Lisa Frank, just like insanity. Right, but so, it works. Right, but because it works. That's because everything. that's what it is, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, it's I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Fun. Cool. Yeah. So. Um, I, I guess just, you know, the points after this would be to touch up like any of your branches and stuff that are, that are okay. underneath in red. Um, and I would touch them up in a very similar fashion to how I did this little broken branch over here of just, I'm just going to slap a color on top of it. Okay. Um, and then maybe I'll go in with like the, uh, the lighter grays and stuff that we ended up putting on the bark. Um, but I won't do like the full step, right? Yeah. Um, another step that you can do in order to really bring it out, kind of similar to how we did the leaves, yeah. is just get like almost a pure white and then really um, softly touch it into places to highlight certain things. Yeah, now um, I'm gonna hand this one to yeah. you. 
show uh, anything you want to show that you did, um, mm -hmm. and like any like of the the tufts and the basing, um, or any other steps. That, you know, I I, I kind of cut you off there. I apologize. Yeah, that's okay. Any other steps that you want to show on that thing? That yeah. So um, I have this variety pack here of uh, both by Gamer Grass. Um, and they come out with a bunch of different tufts. I like Gamer Grass tufts a lot because yes. they're not circles. Yes, um, right. And that's the best thing. Oh, variety pack. Yeah, they come in, you know, it, they're smaller, right? You can get these as, oh, as, um, as like full sheets and stuff, but oh, you have, can also. Yeah. I have the beige yeah, six which, millimeter which would be and four. This one. That one, okay. Yeah. So you can get them in full sheets, yeah. Um, but I like the variety pack because, as you can see here, I like mixing colors when it comes to stuff. Um, and I like blending in different colors, um, especially when it came to this. I was so afraid to use these more green ones, mm -hmm. but I'm like, they're in the, they work. They're in this set. They yeah. work with each other. Yeah. If these three work, then this should work. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't want to go overboard with the green because I really wanted it to look like, you know, things were dying off. Um, but, like, I blended it in there and I, I just, I slapped some super glue on it. I get um, these needle, or sorry, not needle. Uh, the tweezers. These elbow yeah. tweezers here. Um, and they're fantastic for, like, grabbing tufts and just mushing them, them down into Ooh, crevices okay. and stuff. Yeah, and so you know, we sell these at the store. Um, okay. And so I like these a lot. Um, when it came to these longer things here, that's actually what this is. So this is uh, from Woodland Scenics. Um, this is their natural straw, um, like tall grass yeah. and stuff. So these are all actually like loose things. Okay. Um, and so when you open it up, um, it's actually, it's super messy, um, but they're great and I like them a lot. Um, now, um, the other thing, the, the low tech way of doing this, mm -hmm. of doing these is um, using garbage brushes, right? Yeah. With, with a pair of scissors. Yeah. The thing that I like about these is yeah. that in comparison to like let's just say uh, you know one of your one of your brushes over here yeah um, so oftentimes garbage brushes or cheap brushes you know um, or like craft brushes they cut the tips yeah these guys come to a natural thinning almost like a hair okay um, and so they look much more natural when it comes to stuff like this but um, if that's you know, if this is what is available to you, there's there's no need that like there's no reason why these don't work. Yeah, I would just thin them out a little bit, like um, you know, pull some pull some tufts up to make them a little bit extra longer and yes. kind of feign that layering. Yes. Effect. Yeah. Uh, while you show them, I'll I'll grab one of my guys that I've done this on, and you can grade it for us. Okay, so with <laughs> with uh with the woodland scenic stuff. Um, honestly, I bend it in half um, because I want this natural, like, yes. thinning at the top. So I'll bend it in half. Um, I'll find out how long I need it to be. I'll pull out, oh, wait, you know. What are you, what are you doing at the bottom? What did uh, you do right there? Yeah, I just bent them in half. I just folded them in half. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. So I'll kind of measure, like, okay, well, how tall do I want this tuft to be? Uh -huh. um, so I want it to be this tall um, and then I'll get a pair of scissors I'll, I'll clamp it kind of where I want to cut it um, I'll get a pair of scissors these are fabric scissors they're very sharp yeah and um, they can get into they small look, tight spaces they look terrifying. yeah um, you know they'll make you bleed but I like them they're very sharp um, and so I'll just cut it okay and then I'll make it flat I'll dip it into super glue okay and then I'll just use you know this tweezer to then place it where I want to place it. Okay, in. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, seeing that, I was I, I literally did. I'll hand you the one I did today. Okay. You can see. Uh, so one of the things I like to do, if you guys have the the, if you're doing the brushes, the only fun thing is, we use these brushes. Uh, people will, will recognize, maybe recognize when Brett and I did redwoods. That's what we used. 
um, to paint to dry brush our redwood trees. And so then they turned these colors and I was like, cool. I kind of just nat gave them a natural coloring. Yeah, that's awesome. But I actually, what I really uh, appreciate you just showing me right there, and one thing I'm realizing, when I touch the Woodland Scenic ones, they're so much softer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually, I, um, yeah, I think that's actually what I, the way you folded it, Mm -hmm. I don't think I can do that with mine. With these, yeah. And also, they're not long enough, right? Yeah, so mm -hmm. with the thickness and the stiffness of these here, they would make great, almost like, kind of like bulrushes or something that would be like really hardy and thick. Okay. I wanted like a soft grass yeah. feel of like, you know, what would, what would, um, grow at the base of a tree it would be a softer grass, yeah. a smaller, a smaller plant because, you know, they're not getting as much, uh, light um and so yeah not surprisingly there is a um there is a homebrew hack for it but i think after seeing what you've done and feel even feeling them mm -hmm. i was immediately and seeing how easily you bent it uh i was like okay that's that's why oftentimes actually getting the product is is the better call right? yeah and you know at this right this was five dollars yeah it's not um, for this entire stuff, yeah. thing and i pulled out so little and even like i still pulled out even more right and i'm not i'm not worried about like you know uh wasting yeah. or whatever there's just so much yeah. this would be good uh because woodland scenics is a uh, like a model train yeah, yeah, yeah. company yeah, and yeah. so a lot of their stuff is is very um reasonably priced because it's meant to go over a larger area. Right. Woodland yeah. I buy like something from Woodland Scenics and like 10 years later I'm throwing out like the remaining fourth. I'm like I don't think I'm ever going to use this Right. Again. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like the, their shaker bottles of, you know, their their static grass yeah. and stuff. I'm like I could do like I could five do, tables with I could this. do a, a firehouse's worth of Christmas villages with yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so so I like layering different textures, different um, heights, different colors. Um, and even yes. with this, right, I still bought, you know, this this uh, super like XL tough as well too, of like these are super thick. I ended up cutting. What uh, millimeter uh, are the, oh, those are. These are. They're just called XL. A 12 millimeter. Okay. okay. Yeah. These are their, yeah, they're extra large. Yeah, tops. I really like this yeah. brand um, because of what Kat's saying. They, they have every color in multiple sizes. Mm -hmm. um, and I, the variety pack is awesome. I actually kind of wish I had used the variety pack on my Beast Claw Raiders. Um, it's not too late. I could add some more, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Awesome. Um, and the other thing I will finally say that was super cool about the way she did these is um, dipping them in the super clue. Um, I usually kind of was like trying to hold them and then take a little bit of the super glue and then like, uh, like do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and it's, it's kind of a mess. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even with some of them, like this one, I didn't super cut really, like it's kind of like spreading a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then ones that like, I found that were like falling cause maybe I didn't put enough. Do you, do you make I a just bunch? shoved. Okay. I okay. just shoved tufts like to like hold okay, it up okay. and like hide okay. the. Uh, super glueness of it so that it just it, you know you can see that none of them you can see the bases of them yeah um and that's just because it's just it's a cut end right there's no, there's no fading into the ground or anything like that right. so i like using these because they fan out so nice yeah the and, you know, the, yeah. the the gamer grass yeah ones yeah uh okay let's well we we finished these trees mm -hmm. um I, except for this stuff but let's take a look at them on the glam cam here. So here is the original. Okay. And then here are the two new ones. Now mine, I think is a, just like, we actually have like variants here. Um, I'm glad Kat said she didn't want them to be the same or she'd have done them all at the same time. That's actually great insight. And we talk about that on the stream a lot when we do terrain, we're like, we will, when we assembly line terrain, we always encourage our viewers, we say, um, give everybody a gig. Don't don't have one. Don't have everybody doing one uh, tree. Mm -hmm. Have one person doing the bark. One person doing the leaves. And we say that so that um, they come out at least uniformly. Oh, I see. You see what I'm saying? I see. Um, but actually, for you know, what's so great about these trees is that the three variants we have here, they look amazing together, right? Because this is actually how like trees. Yeah, trees look. Yeah, no tree is the same. Uh, I like the wildwood sculpts because you get three different variants. Yeah. Um, 
And even then, like, because uh, we broke off uh, uh, a thing of leaves earlier, you saw how they attach into the um, thing. Yeah. With the instructions for, from Games Workshop, they don't tell you, like, oh, use the bigger leaves at the bottom and use the smaller leaves at the top. The only ones that, like, really only belong in certain areas are just the topper ones. Um, but they are meant to look different, and I, I like them. They, they look like they belong in the same forest, and I like that. They look like they belong in the same forest right next to each other, just like this. This is the most autumn-y thing I've seen uh, this autumn. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it. it was raining earlier, so, you know, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, actually, uh, and Melody's bringing, talking about the mushrooms. To that end, we're talking about the variants, right? So mm -hmm. the leaves are what you want to see variants in. But actually, our trunks and, you know, if we do the bases, which we won't do here in stream, but the bases and then the mushrooms are all similar. Mm -hmm. So they are like what ties it together. But actually, you want the leaves, I think, to be different. Like this look is, is super compelling. I'm actually glad we did this way. Again, I was honestly, I said I was, I'm going to copy this recipe for the new, for the new board uh, that, that I'll be working on next year. And I was thinking I would probably do all the trees the same. But this is so much better. Look at this, like the variety. I love it. Yeah, and, and you know, you can go with the recipe, right? Like yeah. I, I brought a billion paints. There are ones up here that we didn't touch. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I would put every single one of these into one of these trees and, you know, not bat an eye. Um, and one, one that I wish we had up here was like a more of like a cream color. Okay. Because um, that would have been, that would have been nice. But, um I mean, even though we didn't have it, it's yeah. totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they look great. Um, Kat, one more look at them. But thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Um, this has been a lot of fun. We will definitely have to have you back. Uh, like, we, like we sneak peeked, she's got a winter tree um, and at least one other season. Um, now, if you will uh, be with us next week, Brett will be back. And we are going to be doing, this is super autumn of us, I think. Um, next week is the week before, the Wednesday before Halloween, believe it or not, October is already almost over. Um, and we're excited because we're going to be doing something that people do on Halloween. Um, so I'm not going to be able to keep that a secret. We're going to, we're going to play some pumpkins, Brad and I. We're going to show you guys how you can use hobby tools to up your pumpkin carving game. So Dremels, uh, airbrush stencils, all kinds of stuff. Fabric scissors. Uh, fabric scissors. <laughs> I'm gonna. Oh yeah, these things. These are terrifying. Um, uh, so it's gonna be a, a, a little goofy of a stream, um, but please, uh, it's it's sort of like Galaxy Nails, right? It's about grabbing your tools, and I like to say giving back to the community. And the community is the people around you who you isolate yourself from so that you can hobby. So every now and then you can come out of your hobby hole and say, hey, let's use my tools to, to make jack-o'-lanterns, right? Um, great, I think we did it. Kat, anything else? Anything you want to plug? Uh, play Conquest. Conquest. And also shop at Game Castle. Shop at Game Castle. Yeah. Not only if you're in the Bay Area, because now there's one in, let's see. Let me see if I can name them all. There's one Ooh. in Austin, mm -hmm. Reno, mm -hmm. Indianapolis. Right? Mm. No, got that one wrong. Okay, uh, made that up. Um, probably I saw like pics of you and Seth there, but it was probably for um, the con that's there. Oh, Gen Con. Gen Con. Mm -hmm. um, North Carolina somewhere. Is it Asheville? No. South Carolina. South Carolina. Greenville. Greenville. Yeah. Um, I'm missing some. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have <laughs> we have one in uh, Ankeny, Iowa, as well. Um, okay. But it, for the most part, that's that's pretty much uh, Sacramento. Well, oh, too. Sacramento. You can't, you can't forget the Sacramento of one. The Sacramento one. Um, and then we actually have uh, two more opening up uh, soon-ish. I don't know. It depends on how shipping times and everything works. Kinda but crazy uh, right now, we yeah. have one in uh, the Maryland, D.C. area coming soon. Oh, right. Um, right, right. And then... Which is actually uh, where Adrian and I are from. It's oh. like right near. It's a college... Uh, college or a park. College park, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Seattle, Washington. Oh, fun. Yeah. Fun. I should specify if he's watching. Adrian's not from there, but his parents live there now. So, yes, that's super convenient for us uh, when we go back. And then Seattle, fun. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And, uh, uh, I've, I've been to almost every single one of the locations. Yeah. I'm going to have to go anyway. But, yeah, I'm a director of Game Castle. So, 
definitely shop at Game Fun Castle. way to travel. Yeah. And um, awesome store. I love it. Uh, when I first moved to the Bay Area, there was just um, one, honestly, mm -hmm. in 2010. And I had to drive all the way down from uh, Daly City down to San Jose or down to Santa Clara. It's just an amazing store. Um, so if it's one of them is coming to your area, um, check it out because it, it's great. The big thing that I've always kind of noticed that sets Game Castle apart from um, other gaming stores and other there are a lot of great gaming stores out there. So I'm oh, not yeah. naming anyone or throwing anyone under the bus. But when I go into a Game Castle, um, the people like to interact as I'm a customer. Not necessarily, um, you don't kind of get that, like, these are gamers who happen to have a store vibe. You get this vibe of, like, these are people that are happy that I'm a customer. Right. Yeah. Um, lots of times when you go into a gaming store, it's, it's a few buddies who have opened the store. It's a clubhouse. It's a clubhouse, yeah. right? And that's yeah. really what they want to do. And they're maybe not, at the, like, super awesome at customer service. So it's, it's really nice. Yeah, um, that's, our, that's our main goal is uh, uh, not in inclusive, yeah. not exclusive <laughs> yeah. of, you know, Everyone comes from different walks of life, and you know if you are even remotely interested in tabletop hobbying or you know board games or whatever, you're welcome. Yeah, uh, super awesome place, super awesome time, super awesome trees. Sweet. Kat, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for joining us. As we like to say here, be kind to each other, be kind to yourself, and always be creating. See you guys.